All right, chapter 12. Paroxysm, arraign, zealot, catastrophe, aphid, privilege, concact, concatenation, <laughs> xenophobe. Quilleran <laughs> found the compilation of a word list irresistible, and he kept adding to it as he drank his breakfast coffee. Octogenarian, nonagenarian, paradigm, banus, mnemonics, etymology, and yes, irresistible. To escape from this obsessive collecting of words, he took to his bicycle. Oh, he rides a bicycle. Okay. Only in the mornings after his coffee. And his mustache pounding. His silver light was stabled in one of the stalls of the carriage house, and his janitorial service kept it shining. <coughs> the copy for his Tuesday column was in his pocket as he biked downtown on Monday morning, the sun shining on his yellow helmet and the gleaming spokes. At least once on every outing, someone on the sidewalk would shout, Hey ho, Silver! He wheeled into the lobby of the something and no, hung... No, they didn't. They didn't yell in. I'm sorry. They didn't. I don't care how small the town is. They don't. They don't. Oh, no, they totally do. I'm super interesting because I have a... Oh, by the way, I don't picture him as a yellow helmet kind of guy, but I guess now that's in my head now, so that's... All I'm thinking. Well, that's. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't really picture. I, I like maybe movie. like a dark green. He's so masculine, you know. I don't know. I mean, they said it. She said it. <laughs> he wheeled it into the lobby of the something and hung his helmet on the handlebars, knowing there would be a group of fellow staffers around it when he finished his business. Why do you think your bike is so damn interesting? After tossing his copy on Junior Goodwinter's desk... I thought he said coffee. I was like, God, he just <laughs> spilled in the coffee on the poor kid. All over the damn place. After tossing his copy on Junior Goodwinter's desk and commenting on the outcome of Sunday's ball game in Minneapolis, he went to the business office to pick up his fan mail. The office manager, Sarah Plensdorf, was one of his avid fans. She felt it a privilege to hand him his mail personally. She was an older woman from a good family, well-educated, but rather prim. Quilleram had believed her to be descended from a wealthy shipbuilder on Purple Point. But, no thanks to Thornton Haggis, he now suspected a less respectable heritage. He and Sarah had dined together one evening, under unusual circumstances, and had discovered a shared interest, baseball. What did you think of the game yesterday? He asked. Wasn't it thrilling? If father had been alive, he would have had a heart attack. Briefly, he thought of flying Sarah to Minneapolis for a weekend game while Polly was busy with Paul Scumble. But it was only a whim. Everyone in the office would talk and Polly would go into shock. I love how he thinks he is both the hottest thing on the planet coolest thing on the planet, the most talked about thing on the damn planet. He, well, he is. He's got a whole book of them. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Would you like me to slit the envelopes for you, Quill? She asked. I'd appreciate it, he said, knowing that she liked to perform this small service. While waiting, he noticed a trio of butterfly paintings on the wall over her desk. No doubt they had been there right along. Before Lepidoptera had entered his consciousness, Those are Phoebe Sloan's, he remarked. Aren't they beautiful? A California dog face, Hungarian jester, and Queen Alexandra birdwing, which is an endangered species. I have them all over my apartment, too. They give my spirit a lift whenever I enter a room. Cool. How many do you have? 
18. And she's doing an orange albatross for me. I was the first to start collecting, and now everyone's doing it. We're thinking of starting a Phoebe Sloan fan club and getting together to help the conservation of rare butterflies. Your enthusiasm is commendable, he murmured. Well, I've known Phoebe since she was a baby, you see, and I'm terribly proud of her. Our families have known each other for generations. We belong to the same church. I was a bridesmaid at her parents' wedding. She spoke happily, and he wondered if she knew about the Sloanes' current family problems. If so, she was too well-bred to mention it. <laughs> Fucking... As for himself, he followed Shakespeare's advice. Give every man thy ear, but few thy voice. Nevertheless, he said shyly, I suppose Phoebe will be spelling for the drug store team. No doubt, she said with the same cheerful conviction that's all right with the world. I'd like to write a column about Phoebe's speciality, but haven't been able to get a handle on it. Perhaps I should interview collectors and get their individual viewpoints, especially if they organize a fan club with a constructive agenda. Oh, please do, Quill. You don't have to mention me. I, I just want Phoebe to have some nice publicity. He left the office carrying two dozen fan letters and reflecting that Sarah Plensdorf was a remarkably kind, selfless woman. She gave generously to good causes and spoke ill of no one. Mm -hmm. He would have to consult the county historian about the Plensdorf background. Was it shipbuilding or what? He was on the way to the lobby to retrieve his silver light from an admiring throng when footsteps came running down the hall behind him. Quill! Quill! came a woman's anxious voice. It was Hixie Rice. <laughs> Got a minute? She beckoned him to follow her to the conference room. Sit down, Quill! She closed the door. I smell a sinister plot, he said lightly then noticed that she looked troubled. Uh-oh, he thought. As another good idea bombed, she's jinxed. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what a fucking dick. <laughs> we have a problem, she blurted. It's the spelling bee. I don't dare tell Arch, not after the ice festival fiasco. That was an act of God, Hicks. <laughs> no one could predict we'd get April weather in February. You can't predict that. You can never predict yeah, that kind so of weather. Far. That's two months, dude. That's too much. No. Uh -uh. <laughs> What's the hang-up now? I thought you had ten enthusiastic sponsors lined up. We do. We do. And they've paid their entry fees up front. It's their employees who are dragging their feet. They don't want to stand up and spell in front of an audience. Relatives of employees are eligible too, but we still got it, only seven spellers. We need 30 to man 10 teams. Do they know they'll have a practice word list to study in advance? They know that. And we still haven't been able to speak or spark any interest. <laughs> well, you haven't been able to do that either. <laughs> That's why you have well a spelling bee. <laughs> Dude, I feel really dumb with this book because they use a lot of big words and all they're talking about is literacy and it makes me feel dumb Dude, as Dude, this fuck. is like what they do. They I don't know what it is with, a, with the wrong cat lady books. The right cat lady books are like, we're all just about like cookies. chill. They're like, chill, it's chill, it's, it's cookies, wine. And it's then the wine, rest are like, fun. you drunk bitch, learn to spell. And all these <laughs> other ones are like, I most definitely came from somewhere like this and I'm shitting on it very hard. I don't, okay, literacy, okay. I'm not saying literacy is important. This is a big political issue, and I will not get political on this channel. All I'm saying is you might not be shitting on it just because you have a literacy foundation in a place where literacy is low. No, Because no, some people no. want to read and write, you understand. No, I'm saying women, especially like Lillian Jackson Braun, and a lot of men, love to write 
with the thesaurus oh, and no, make themselves look like they know so many no, more no, words no, than they no. usually would speak with. Yeah, no, that, that's what I'm saying. It, this feels like a passion project of uh, no one in my town can read, so I'm going to use all the biggest words. <laughs> so what, they can't read it? Like what? Well, yeah, they'll have to learn if they want to read. They'll have to learn notes. if they want to read how much I hate them. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that was mean, Lily. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, sorry, I just feel real fucking dumb reading this book. No, I know. Um, I'm bad. Yeah. First, the first page was fantastic. Proved literacy rate real good. I told you they were trying to hurt me on the first page. <laughs> oh, right, that's what you said. Though. That's what I said earlier. There are before we words started. on the first page. That's, yeah, that's what I said. Sorry, there are words. Quote. Yeah. <laughs> The Lockmaster Ledger is sponsoring a similar event. They always copy us. And they're finding the same lack of response. I don't understand it, Quill. Adult spelling bees are highly successful down below. Are they? (laughs) They draw from a population of millions, he reminded her. Also, what works for them doesn't necessarily work 400 miles north of everywhere. Could you suggest a solution? She asked without much show of hope. I'd need to think about it. Give me a few hours and I'll get back to you. And cheer up, Hixie. There's a solution to every problem. Quilleran returned to the lobby, answered questions about his bike, put on his yellow helmet, and pedaled home. Although he claimed to do his best thinking while biking or sitting in an easy chair with his feet up, he had not produced a single useful thought by the time he wheeled the silver light into the carriage house. From there, he trudged through the woods to the barn. The kitchen window was open, and he could hear the Siamese yowling through the screen long before he came in view. It was twelve noon, and time for their treat. That was the reason for the clamor. Not any eagerness for his agreeable presence. (laughs) That was all right. He was used to playing second fiddle to a bowl of kabibbles. My god, your cats hate you, Quill again. (laughs) When will you know this? Cats like pets, Quill. Cats like pets. They hate you. They hate you, Quill. (laughs) Because you pat your mustache more than you pat them. Yeah, that's why. They're like, he's always petting that caterpillar on his face. Why don't he even pet me? Less mustache, more pussy. (laughs) 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 having taken care of their needs he prepared coffee and carried a mug to the lounge area where he could sit with his feet up and doodle ideas on a legal pad the siamese watched sitting comfortably on their briskets yum yum on the rug cocoa on the coffee table keeping a book warm with the spelling bee needed, Quilleran, er, <laughs> with, with and what, yeah, close enough. What the spelling bee needed, Quilleran told himself, was a new approach entirely. A new name for the, the event. New terminology. A new format. Yow! Came a comment from the <laughs> coffee table. Thank you for the encouragement, Quilleran said. In other words, what we need is a whole new ball game. Coco jumped down to the floor and ran around in circles. She wants a pet, or he wants a pet. If he touches his mustache before he touches that cat, is it happening? Is it coming up? Ball game. That's it. Of course. Why not? Only then did he realize that the book Coco had been keeping warm was baseball and illustrated history. I think I had that book. I don't think that's a real book. It can't be. So, it was the one on that one coffee table. I oh, think. wow. What good reads in that house. I know, right? <laughs> had Coco sensed the problem that was on his mind? The idea of a telepathic connection between man and animal was not unthinkable in today's science. But could a cat, even one with 60 whiskers, go so far as to convey a solution? Not likely. It was a simple coincidence that the baseball book had been on the coffee table at that time. Even so, stranger things had happened in that household. As for the baseball theme, it was perfect for Moose County, 
where folks went berserk over a softball game between scrub teams. How about ten teams of all-star spellers competing in an orthographic pennant race with the mayor of Pickaxe pitching out the first word? And how about a World Series in September between the pennant winners of Moose County and Lockmaster? And how about having the Pickaxe Barbershop Quartet sing Take Me Out to the Spell Game? Quillaran looked for the issue of the something that had first announced names of the sponsors. The ten teams would need nicknames, and the spellers would need baseball caps in their team colors. And how about t-shirts with the team name on the front, and the spellers number on the back? You can't tell the spellers without a scorecard. Hawkers could spell peanuts or, and Cracker Jacks. He poured another mug of coffee and went to work on the nicknames. Money bags, pickaxe people, or People's National Bank. Nail heads, XYZ Enterprises. Oilers, Gipples Garage. Ladders, pickaxe boosters. Chow heads, Old Stone Mill. Daubers, the art center. Pills, Sloan's Drugstore. Muckers, oh. Farmers' is Collective, Hams, Pickaxe Theater Club, Diggers, Dingleberry Funeral Home. That sounded like so much more than ten teams when you did it like that. <laughs> it did, for one. And for two. I'm pumped! Oh I'm my pumped! God. I'm so pumped, but you were such trash. Just pills, diggers. Muckers. Oh, yeah, I understand why this town's illiterate. It's because their pharmacy is just called fucking pills. They are dope. No. Up. No. Dude, who just names the pharmacy pills? Dude. Quillaran is coming up with hip, cool baseball team names for the Sloan's drugstore. Oh. Oh, oh, He's okay. naming them oh. pills. So it can be the team pills. And Team Muckers! No, no, I got that it was the first part and those were going to be the names, but I just kind of thought these words maybe associate... Like, I know pills associate with the pharmacy, but I thought it was something like, oh, yeah, they have, like, pill discount something, and it's always, like, a thing. Like, it, it, it's something that comes to mind. Like, there's a pill discount. Like, he's just like, motherfucking pills, they have those, right? Yeah, and that's why yeah, no, Farmers no, Collective is just muckers. Well, I yeah, but I thought and theaters yeah, is hams. Yeah, but that, but that, okay, yeah, you see, but that's what I mean. I thought the fucking farm collector already just kind of called themselves muckers, like as just like kind of a, a nice little nickname for <laughs> themselves, like in the town. Like I thought this these are already established kind of kind of things you would already associate. In more of a community way and not just he's insane and said ham and food. Oh, wait. Ding, ding, ding. Do not go on a meat rant. It's a, it's a warning. I talked about ham. Quillaran phoned the newspaper and read his notes to Hixie, who greeted them with yelps of relief. We'll announce it on page one tomorrow, she said, almost breathless with enthusiasm. Spellers will clamor to sign up. Everyone in town will be pumped up. But no one in town can spell. I would not be pumped to spell if I was completely illiterate. And I, I like, it still stresses me out. I can spell Guillermo. If they is Spanish, that's different. <laughs> the trick will be to move fast while it's hot. He advised. Next wing. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Next week, we can sing it in ten days. What about uniforms for the spellers? No, bad idea. Colored wristbands, cooler, and don't go insane. One of the t-shirt shops in Mooseville does custom imprinting. The baseball caps can be ordered Air Express. Air Express. Polly will have to scrape up a word list in a hurry. You'll have to sound out to the Lockmaster Ledger about the World Series. He reminded her. Whatever. Oh, they'll go for it. I know those guys. Another thing, Hixie. Instead of MC, Wordmaster, and Judge, 
The officials should be I don't know. coach, pitcher, and umpire. Okay, Quillery. Now, no, now, now, like you were like, I want to get pump- people pumped about spelling, but now you're dressing them like it's just baseball. Now you're just tricking people into thinking it's a baseball. And game. when it's not baseball, they're gonna, they're gonna be really fucking angry. <laughs> and they're gonna throw everything. You better bring your helmet. Because they're gonna be like, you know, those times, like those specific innings in a baseball game where it's so long because no actions ever happen. Mm-hmm. It's it's all that. Well, and, there and will you, never get there. Be you get there. You get there. You get there. And you're like, oh look, that's cute. The nerds that can spell dressed like baseball kids, and they are all spelling for like, oh, that's cool. And you wait like 30 minutes, and you're like, oh, this is like the thing before the game, right? Like, this is really cool, okay? So they've got like two teams pitted against each other right now, and those yeah, they get no, like, that are stayed yeah, on the but, last thing, they're going to be the two teams that fight against each other in the baseball game, well, right? Well, no, well, no, I no, I wouldn't even think it's a baseball team. I, I would think, think it's some fucking nerd collective, because it fucking well, is. Yeah, it is. Okay, sorry, Quilleran. This is the nerdiest thing I've ever fucking heard. I've never came out this bully past 25, but you sound like a nerd. <laughs> but, like... <laughs> oh. Fuck. Like... Now you're just tricking people to think it's a baseball game. They're going to think it's some weird nerd fucking show before the game, and then they're going to throw... Like they're not gonna throw like burritos at you. But they're gonna throw like popcorn at you. Well, or there's something. ten and there's ten teams. Like how many people are in each team? I mean, I think it was like three or like two. Did they know one? But yeah, they were like no one's interested because it sucks. <laughs> well, that's, that's true. Um, yeah, but he but... thinks this is gonna make people sign up because people are gonna be like, oh, I love to spell, but I just didn't because they didn't put me in a baseball hat. Also, like when you don't play sports and you wear a baseball hat. And you start spelling, it could look like, oh, just a little cuter than it should. Like, you're dumb. I'm sorry. If I saw a bunch of adults spelling before a baseball game, I would think it's like, wow. They're I really think trying it was hard. Some, I think it was some kind of well, team building office activity punishment. <laughs> you were all the worst to work. I don't know what is going on. You're like, you are literally all so bad at sales. We're making you spell. I don't know why. We're just doing that. <laughs> wow. Call center still it just seems you hard. So strange. Like, <laughs> did you get punished for call center? Was do you have to spell? <laughs> yes. But also, it just seems so wrong. Like all I'm imagining is they're like, this is gonna get people pumped. But I don't, I don't imagine it getting people pumped. I imagine what they're actually doing because it's what they think their town is like is that they're actually like well everyone's so fucking dumb as bricks and here's a good idea we just call everything baseball related and give them a roster to sign up on and then they'll just show up and when they get in their jerseys they'll be so fucking excited they can't leave when we start the spelling bee well, and that'd be pretty fun, though. Because I'd stay for that, because then no one that'd would be, be able funny. to spell. That'd be funny. A captive spelling okay, bee. Maybe this... A spelling prank. A drunken spelling prank. Okay, that would cool, be entertaining. Man, I'm getting behind. Okay, now that idea. is a good... Okay, that is a good It went from activity. nerdy to nerdy. It's a cool See, I fixed it. activity now. <laughs> you you get it. drunk. You think you're going to baseball. It's actually a spelling bee. And then you just get, you know, you sign up on the roster, so you're like, I'm going to be in this volunteer game. And you're like, whoa, bro. Yeah, let's bring the whole family. We'll come watch you. And then, yeah, everyone gets Shit face like they would have yeah, yeah, and like, <laughs> and then just, it, and it's a drinking game. You drink yeah. every time you spell something wrong, oh, yeah. and then you keep going until one team is like. This is actually a fantastic. Idea. I, have this an is idea, <laughs> I have an idea. Way more fun. I have an idea. This is way more fun. <laughs> but I think more people can spell here because I don't care what anyone says about here. This town seems like fucked up. <laughs> oh my god, Quill, what can I say? She cried. You're a lifesaver. Okay. Oh. <laughs> you owe me a dinner at the Palomino Paddock. I hope it gets stuck in your mustache. Quilleran hung up with a sense of satisfaction. Next, he would have to help Polly with her word list. Mayonnaise, reminiscence, sherbet, schizophrenia, raisin, complexion, lettuce, exacerbate. <laughs> oh no, you got stuck on the dum dum list. Is it Vichyssoise? Is that how it's pronounced? What? <laughs> I think it's, you know, V I C H Y S S O I S E. Oh, fuck off. I don't know. Vichyssoise? I don't care, but are you saying 
these are the only fucking words these people know. Lettuce. <laughs> well, it's a mix of easy words and the most complicated. That's what that he said. That word has a Y next to an I, right? Like the last one in italics. <laughs> Oop. Oh, it has. Was it have next to an I? Something weird. No, no. Okay, I'm just blind. Yeah, you weird. are. I'm blind. Stop and talking. Oh shit. Mind the. It belongs to Spider B. Also, I just I don't know. It's just really funny when someone literally literally takes up space with words, <laughs> just just words. I know. She's done it three times now. In this chapter. Yeah. <clears throat> the preponderance of edibles reminded oh. him that he had no lunch. Oh, he... don't eat those, cool man. <laughs> <laughs> he made a sandwich and went on listing while he ate it. Charismatic, assassination, penicillin, physiological, chaperone, doggerel, precocious, illiteracy. Ha, ha, ha. That's so funny. <laughs> pause and I'm take a break. Me. There's a paw on the page, so drink up, babe. I have no natty. Get yourself a natty, you motherfucking little shitty dairy. You just call me a dairy? That's right. Move. Fuzzy milkshake brings all the boys to the yard, and they're like, it's worse than yours. version of it like that when you're seen in first person and say my milkshake brings all boys to yard and they're like it's worse than yours when you sing that to me then fine i still get more boys than you because your milkshake's worse than mine i didn't sing it in my yeah, i yeah, said yeah, you, i said your milkshake brings all the boys there. I didn't well say mine. i i it's fine i have proof i have proof that says your milkshake brings <laughs> yeah, all the boys I, to the yard I, I have proof you're right here and i'm not listening to it now i'm drinking my beer Oh, aren't we a boy? <laughs> Whatever. We have a boy podcast with a boy beer. It was an exciting week for the residents of Moose County. Tuesday's paper carried the front page announcement with all the buzzwords. All stars. Pennant race. World series. Take me out to the spell game was also the slogan on posters everywhere, in store windows, on bulletin board, the library. You know, you're going to get a lot of nerds thinking this is like a magic tournament. Spell, like a spell game. Like, magic, magic. Well, yeah. I role play on you. That, that kind of shit. It's 1998. No one has that many balls. They're not going to assume that. <laughs> but it is 1998, and that was the height of LARPing and fucking card games, I think. Like, I'm saying, I think nerds got the ballsiest then because they, like, took over, like, small towns, and they finally got their first game shops and shit. So I think they were ballsy. Well, that may be true. I don't, I, I don't think they're going to think it's a LARP spell event, though, in their illiteracy town, apparently. Just posted in the news. They've never seen an entire thing in their entire lives posted in the newspaper okay. about LARPing. Okay, and dumb, today, okay. it's, oh my god, okay, it's okay, a spell okay, tournament. What if dumb, dumb people who, okay, you could just, it's not <laughs> the like. The dumbest people. Yeah, apparently this town's really dumb. <laughs> yeah, the dumbest nerds. They picked up the paper today, who which they can't read anyway. Yeah. And they're <laughs> like, oh my god, this fucking town has never talked about nerd well, shit. Yeah, exactly. They We're can't doing read, today. so that's the only thing they know is spell game. And so they're like, oh, that's going to be a tournament. And there's probably going to be a bunch of people watching a magic tournament at the baseball tournament. Dude, he's making spelling fucking... Yeah, I guess, they're like, I guess that's pretty fucking strange. But, you know, I've been tracking the progress of Quilleran. And his mustache has gotten 
two very quite wizardly lengths. So I think it's about time this town did have a spell game. I'm I'm happy for this town. It's a spell game. And okay, also, I, I heard I'm him. back on track with what you're saying. See, also you you reeled me back in. Good. And also, you know, I heard this guy. You know, I heard Quill Warren mumbling about making a spelling bee baseball game. So, yeah, no, I think he would make a nerd baseball game, too. Yeah, it'll probably be good. Let's go, guys. See, they're dumb. It worked. It worked. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> take it. Take it to five paws. So, take me out to the spell game mm. was the slogan on posters everywhere, in mm -hmm. store windows, on the bulletin board at the library, in church fellowship rooms, on street corners, and in coffee shops, it was the chief topic of conversation. Coffee shops, and you have an illiteracy problem. So, literacy problem. <laughs> problem. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> coffee shops, plural. And then and everyone got... seems to be awfully involved. Like, there's a flyer goes up in every window. That's like, nobody does A non-school... <laughs> related art center like i mean an art center will fucking stick anything to a non-school related art center Dude. you have one and you have like a yeah but okay yeah, so indian I guess, yeah, well, I guess, or uh, what, pakistani yeah, well, or something oh, restaurant yeah, well, yeah well, you know, but, and you're no, like we no, got a small no, town no, we never no, done no, shit no that's not true i guess no 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 i know exactly where it takes place takes place in the L town. That's exactly the size and the annoyance of this place. So yeah, no, I can see that. Yeah, but they this, also dude, keep acting like they they're have, a small town that yeah. never had a newspaper until the fucking something like five, ten, ten years ago. Oh yeah, like, Why we never had a newspaper before yeah. until Quill came up with his fancy mustache and was like, <laughs> "Have you ever heard of words? Darling, I write them. Can darling. you read them?" No, that's spelled with a G at the end. Can you say that G? Like my God. Um, yeah, you're right. I know they. I, I sorry. That's what I'm I saying. Act like, I forget they act like this was like a, a thatch of sand. They like, literally five act like years ago. A thatch of sand. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Well, and also, they're also acting like it's a thatch of sand because why in the fuck is every person in town talking about this? Do you know how many flyers I've seen around town for events and never heard a person speak about There's them? There's a talent show? Like, everywhere. <laughs> There's a talent show. There's a burger thing at a fucking fire station. I don't fucking know. I've never heard anyone talk about anything that's ever been on a flyer. And you're saying that not only are the posters everywhere, but everyone well, yeah, everywhere well, is well, like, and, Did you know we're having well, a and, baseball and, spelling bee and, party and, pizza thing? <laughs> I mean, that's exactly how they say it, too. That's um, exactly... Yeah. But... They seem to be really excited about literacy for being so fucking illiterate. Like, they seem to really like to spell in this town. This seems like a very academic town. Why are they acting like they're on the verge of losing all their houses because they can't read their goddamn mortgage agreements? I don't know. <laughs> I'm so confused. I'm starting to believe that Quill is the only one that says they have a literacy problem. Yeah, because he does. Yeah, because they're it's not like. like well, they don't they're spell not like. They're like, not like. They're not like. You don't know that simple Latin word that starts so many of our meager English language. Oh, you illiterate fool. Yeah, I'm starting to think he's just an asshole. You don't use precocious in every 200 of your word writings? You don't <laughs> think in the amount of words you've spoken within the day, madam? Yeah, I'm starting to think he's just you an asshole. You can't identify a font. <laughs> Yeah, well, you can't identify a butterfly now. Oh, yeah, by the way, he's acting like an expert now. He's like, that's that. I'm like, you, dude, you didn't know. That was a woman. That wasn't him. Oh, sorry. You you pay the goddamn attention. No, <laughs> he said, hey, that's that. And she said, yeah, and that's that and that. That's what she said. You are. No, I'm not. Ridiculously. He looked up at the thing and it was orange. He said it. I don't care you cut it out, there's a fight. I don't care about the fight. Those are Phoebe Sloan's, oh he remarked. He remarked? Yes, those are yeah. Phoebe Sloan's. Is he talking to a man? He's talking to the woman. I exactly, so I'm saying also he's acting like a butterfly expert. No, he's not. Like he's saying those are her paintings because 
I done oh. saw a big painting yesterday. I know that looked like butterfly. Oh, so he's even dumber. He just assumes all of butterfly paintings are by yes, the same person. Yes, he does, because he probably doesn't even recognize the Sorry, paintings. I thought that was the name of a butterfly, and I thought he was acting like a butterfly. Yeah, I, I know you thought. I know. You, I know you thought. I know you thought. Mm -hmm. Brain is very wrong. Hey, Phoebe Sloan sounds like a butterfly name. No, it doesn't. Phoebe Oshlis Lukosius. Yeah, that's what you would say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tickets run off overnight in the something printing plant went on sale at the bank, drugstore, and Old Stone Mill. Sales were so brisk that the venue was changed from the community hall to the high school auditorium, which had double the capacity. As for the spellers, some important names were signing up. Dr. Diane Landspeak for the pills, Juan L. McWannell for the money bags, and Derek Cuddlebrink for the hams. Then it was Hixie's idea to sign up a battery of pinch spellers, celebrities who would sit in the front row and add glamour to the event, although they would not be called upon to spell. Meanwhile, Quilleran had a relative... Can I do that? Is that, is that what I get to do in a small town spelling bee? Can I be the no, celebrity? No, because you're not a damn celebrity. You're just a freak. But what the fuck is a celebrity in the Statue of Sand? Isn't it just the guy who wears all black? I don't know. <laughs> they didn't have a newspaper! <coughs> they can't have celebrities! Meanwhile, Quilleran had a relatively quiet week. He went for the daily rides on the Silverlight. He took the Siamese on trips to the gazebo and visits to the caterpillars in the guest room. The larvae were still wiggling and stuffing themselves with green leaves. Although Coco was unimpressed... Yum Yum trembled with catly ecstasy. Even when the door to the guest room was closed, she knew something vital was happening within, and she sat outside for hours. Quilleran also wrote his long-promised tribute to Mrs. Fisheye. It was a pre preface to a quill pen on the common hen's egg that, oh, void porcelain jewel with golden orb quivering in a puddle of transparent viscosity as it waited to be fried, scrambled, or poached. He quoted egg farmers, chefs, nursery rhymes, Shakespeare, and Cervantes, who advised him against putting all one's eggs in one basket. When Quilleran handed in his copy to Junior, just in time for the Friday noon deadline, the managing editor scanned it rapidly and said, Up goes the piece of eggs all over Moose County. Price of eggs. I can't read. It's <laughs> dark and I'm blind! <laughs> <laughs> Up goes the price of eggs all over Moose County. Now yeah, we're done with that small section. A oh, fuck you. <laughs> Me? Hit. <laughs> no! <laughs> what? Fuck Quilleran. Well, no shit. And his tributes and his porcelain viscosity filled eggs. Dude, I spaced out for like one second and I was like, whoa, when you get a crystal ball, bitch. <laughs> Why the fuck he talking about an egg? Dude, I don't know. I mean, the fact of the matter... The fact of the matter that I am... able to remember that he brought up his stupid teacher... That, like, pushed him in writing... Yeah, I know, dude. ...is a good testament, I guess, to my brain right now. Yeah, look, you're not retarded. But, honestly, I just thought it was one of those things you say. Yeah. And he was like, one of these days, I need to write that woman a tribute. And then you never bring it back up in the book. But no. Like, this is why I don't I don't know what to believe. Because I just believe that this is... Sometimes I believe this is Lillian Jackson Braun's fantasy of what the perfect man is. And then sometimes I believe that, that this is, is Lillian douchebag. Jackson Braun's fantasy of herself as a man. And her desperation <laughs> to be Quilleran, the mustache-patting... 
writer. Because she just adds things <laughs> that aren't like... They're not character thoughts. They're not expositionary they're, story They're quiet story little needs. additions. They're like someone... Oh, and by the way, Quill also finished that thing he said he was going to do because he's such a good man that actually isn't procrastinating like I am. <laughs> I swear and gets on God. doing all the things that he would normally do. <laughs> Giving homage to those people he said he would do like I did 30 years ago. Like when I said I'd give you that $20,000. <laughs> I did that. I did. <laughs> Quilloran would do that. So would I. <laughs> oh, you what? You lost my address? Oops. Well, Quilloran is also a man on the move. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> that is what I believe. <laughs> I fucking Is that know Lillian it. is like, this is me. <laughs> I am Quilloran. But I also want to fuck myself. Yeah, I think she just wants... Like, I don't know, maybe she well, just actually, wants to be a writer and she's like, I just want to flirt with all the ladies. Because he's such a little douchebag. Well, I, he's I like, think she's got a mm-hmm, Beyonce mm-hmm. problem of if I were a boy. Like, oh, I wish there was a mustache man who was like me, who would <laughs> treat old ladies nice. And that's it's like a little sad. How? But it's oh. also a really narcissistic okay. thought. How is that the Beyonce problem? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Beyonce has that like one song from like eight thousand years ago. If I say the like, year, you think it'll like, turn to dust. It's called "If I Were a Boy," and it was like so bad because it's like, if I were a boy, I'd like be nice to girls, and I would. It's it's Fuck the off. worst song. Okay, dude, I complain about the song. You know, once every like seven years, just for a good twenty seconds, because it's just the dumbest, most sexist, weirdest song in the world, and. No one really played it because no one liked it. Okay. <laughs> um, well, that makes sense because. Well, I think that's like exactly abuse victims liked it, like extreme abuse victims, but like you're in a place where you are thinking about Beyonce turning into a man and saving you from your trauma. So, like, yeah, that's who it's for. So, it's a weird song, you know? Yeah. It's, it's a healing song. It's a, it shouldn't be on the top of the charts. That's all <laughs> I think. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I talk about domestic abuse sometimes. Sorry to do. Riding home on the silver light, Quilloran was waved down by a motorist. He pulled over to the curb, and the driver parked ahead of him. Elizabeth Hart jumped out of the car wearing a long, colorless tunic over a long, full skirt. Was it see-through? Equally <laughs> colorless. Oh, she naked, Quilloran. <laughs> what brings you to town? He asked, removing his helmet. I had business at the bank, so I bought some tickets for the spell game. Derek is spelling for the hams. Has he started his new job? Yes, and I don't see very much of him. He works late. And has morning classes. What does he think of the restaurant? Well, you know Derek. He's really cool. Being an actor, he can adjust to situations. He plays a role. Does he like his boss? Mr. Ramsbottom rarely makes an appearance. Derek is in total charge. He says he takes a lot of phone messages from Mrs. Ramsbottom. And also from a woman named Bunny. Um, I, uh, yeah, he is a whore. That's the hot guy, right? The hot guy. Remember she said he's hot? Oh, right, he's like 6'8". Yeah, he's the hot guy, right? Yeah. So. Well, that's true. He takes a lot of calls from two rich old ladies. He is a whore. Okay, so that is his skill. I was right. I was right. Is the bartender as hostile as Derek anticipated? Well, his girlfriend comes to the bar every night and stays till closing, and she likes to talk with Derek. The bartender doesn't care for that greatly. Her name is Monkey. What? <laughs> Where the... Okay, a bunny, that's... No- Sadly enough, that's normal. I've met... There, at I've least seen two there, different bunnies. There are monkeys, dude. There are... Well, have, you know. met a mo- have you met a monkey? And... Um, it is, a, it is a name I've seen in, like, 
like close enough like businesses like like there'll be someone who like owns a business or like it'll be like oh this was inspected by or you know like something like a wall like you just see like at a bank or something yeah so i have seen you've seen name. a sign that says inspected by not monkey. like i'm saying like there'll be a plaque or like a you know some you know and it's like this house was inspected by or this just something it says inspected by okay monkey. i'm just giving inspected <laughs> as a good example of what could have a signature on it yeah I've seen the name, like, in, like, things. Like, I haven't known a person, but I've seen random paperwork that's, like, yeah. Well, I haven't. But I've met a bunny. Cool. We all have. This but the America. likelihood of getting both of them together is very rare. You don't know this town. It's a thatch of sand. <laughs> I know her, Quilleran said. You do. She's a successful artist. Oh, of course she is. Great. Is she attractive? Elizabeth asked, nope. bristling slightly. Tactfully, oh. he replied, not really. A police car pulled alongside, and the officer pointed to the no parking sign. Elizabeth ran back to her car, and Quilleran said, Sorry, officer, we had a little problem here, nothing serious. Take care, Mr. Q. He received two phone calls that afternoon, one conveying information he expected and one coming as an eye-opener. First, weather be good, called. As upbeat as ever, but brief and to the point. My cousin is on cloud nine about collaborating with you, Quill. She's sending you some info on crows to give you an idea of the possibilities. Sounds good. How soon will she be visiting here? Late July. What do you think of the spell game? I Hixie comes up with the, some neat ideas, doesn't she? That she does, Quilleran replied, aware that credit and discredit were always heaped on the hapless promotion director as her project soared and crashed. But what I really called Quill, the county offices in Lockmaster don't have any record of a business firm by the name of Northern Land Improvement. Thanks, Joe. That's all I wanted to know. The news merely confirmed his suspicions. The NLI was a front for XYZ Enterprises. Before he could give it a second thought, however, a call came from the owner of the department store. Quill, will you be free and at liberty after 5.30? Pender and I would like to have a few words with you. Come on over. We'll have a TGIF drink in the gazebo. Who okay. Who talks like that? Right after store closing. Who the fuck does that? No one ever seriously says that. Like, people say it. In 98. No, yeah, but no one says Wow. It. Like, yeah, can, uh, yeah, yeah. Can you answer me, anyone out there? Did anyone did seriously anyone say, say like, TGIF like, in, like, like, like I mean, like, if you're like, ha ha, TGIF, I get that. But would anyone say, let's have a TGIF Like, that is an odd drink. way to say that. Has anyone said I, that? I, I, and if you have known anyone who said it, were they really weird? Like, Quillery? <laughs> <laughs> were they constantly patting something? <laughs> you never buy snacks. You go to the gas station, you get beer, and you never buy snacks. Well, snacks are expensive. I know. Gas station snacks should die. Why can't I buy beer at the gas station for cheaper than I can buy snacks at the gas station? That's actually depressing to think about. Yeah, no, because they just hope you'll be so fucking true. drunk that you'll cave. And that's so mean. Well, because you spell, like, <laughs> you spend, like, I mean, equivalent. It's like $10 to $11 to $12 a pack of, like, 15 beers. Good <laughs> Yes, that is my go-to or at the gas like station. Or it's, like, $3.50 to $4. That dollars. That's your go-to at the gas station. I know it's the best deal. It's 15? the best deal. Who doesn't? Um, what people. good American does not... What good human being <laughs> does not <laughs> only go for the cheap, high alcohol, high volume... Not volume, like, as in I, beer, I volume as in, like, quantity in your package beers. 
That's my president. <laughs> right there, Swin. I swore. Slimmy. Slimmy. Go Slimmy. for a 15 pack in every home by 2025. <laughs> Wait, are, you're just going to get elected like straight up in like an odd year? I'm going to get elected in an odd year. Oh, no, you get elected in 2024, I guess, by 2025. You, But it won't be beer. hard, because all I'm doing Wait, is promising I'm... one pack of 15 cans of beer in every home. Not That's multiple. a lot of beer. It's a lot of beer, but it's not but as you're much the as president. They think. They're thinking, like, beer forever. I'm thinking, like, well, beer Well, all you have to day. do is give them a rebate when they do their taxes for, like, $12. That's true. That's literally all you have to do. That's all you have to do. <laughs> Yeah, you could technically, you're technically charging them. For oh no! I just said I wasn't going to get political. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. I don't know what the fuck you're saying. Well, well, that's the best thing about reporting I'm yourself. Hungry. Oh, I'm hungry. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and beer is like twelve dollars or eleven dollars or ten dollars. Yeah, I know. And cheese its are like three eighty for a baby size. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> and it's unacceptable. It's like actually a bag abuse. of chips. Especially when you are filling me up with cheap beer. That's abuse. Like, do you Where know are my human rights? <laughs> like, I don't have to buy the beer. <laughs> I'm not trying to be some fat little piece of shit right here. Oh my god, here we go. Is it going to be about meat, like, dude? I don't always want to cook <laughs> meat? a potato oh. and eat, like, cute potatoes or fries. Sometimes dude, you sound I want... so poor right now. <laughs> I'm saying if I want a snack. Oh, a snack. Eight, Sorry, yeah. it sounded I'm like you're like, no. if I want to eat, I don't want to have to eat the potato, but government don't give me anything but potato. No, I'm not saying <laughs> when I'm starving I, I, and hungry. I'm saying I when I want a snack, I don't always want to be like, ah, oh, fuck, I'm a little peckish. I'll go take 15 to 20 minutes to cook a potato based on, for some reason, that potato of the day. I don't know what's with the potatoes. They cook at different times. Yeah, I know. But I don't want to do that every time. Sometimes I want to grab a chip. But I also can't... Like, if a bag of chips is $4, but a five-pound bag of potatoes is, like, $2, I'm like, what the hell is... What is... Go I can't do that. I can't buy that and eat that without thinking, like, I am just eating money. I'm just eating <laughs> all of it. It's going away. It's just, like, Cheeto-encrusted money. Like, it's just not acceptable. Like, that one day, I was so happy. I'm like, fuck, man. Like, it's a good day. I'm drunk. I'm all happy. I'm gonna grab this bag of fucking chips shit right now. And I fucking spent it. And then I fucking ate through it. And I was so fucking happy. But when I fucking finished, you know, when I started getting to that point, as you do with that every post, bag of chips. That post-snack clarity. That, no, it's not even post-snack clarity. It's post-money. It's, post it's, it's like 75% <laughs> snack clarity, where you're 75% through it, but you're still eating it. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> you're like, I kind of don't like this anymore. I've had my fill today. And then you're like, shit, why the fuck did I buy this? It's already making me feel like crap. And then you're like... Whatever though, it's almost done. I'm, I guess I'll still eat it for some reason, and because I I do like it when I'm not. I don't fuck. I don't fuck. Doesn't matter. But then you're like, I spent five dollars on this. And the worst part is, is that it's not even like you get half and half. It's not even like, oh, well, I only ever want to finish it to half. It's like you get almost done, and then you're like, why did I do that? But I might as well finish the last two <laughs> chips. I hate it. I hate it. I know. And then you spent like four dollars. And the Pringles guy is ugly. Now, you got a bad facelift. What's sure. the point? <laughs> well, yeah, okay, we're making it sound like Pringles are five dollars at the gas station. The Pringles are not. They are like three eighty. No, no, I bet they are like three eighty or. No, two. I'm talking about you know. No, no, the... I'm just saying how the Pringles are expensive. I know that Pringles are just expensive shit. Pringles normally are like <laughs> 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 fucking. I don't know, like between like. <laughs> One ninety nine, two fifty. At the gas station at that hell. At the gas station. Yeah. Okay. No, no I'm talking gas yeah, station. Yeah. Okay. Not grocery store. No, gas grocery station. I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember if they have normal size Pringles. Do they just have the baby ones? Or if they just have the small ones? I, I know they don't have the 
Party Pack, which is an The extra. Party Pack's a ripoff. We've all fucking known that for, like, 15 years. But, yeah, it's probably... <laughs> it's it's probably at the the higher range of your 280 to 350-something. Yeah, I know. That's a highway robbery. For, Sorry. like... <laughs> Stop! We have to stop. We're not going on meat rant. We're going on snack rant. Shit. <laughs> like, and then no, it's it... not even because I am fucking stoner. What? It's not because I'm stoner. It's because I'm fat. Yeah. No, I'm saying like people like talk about snacks so much. Oh, no. You must be baked. Yes. Like baked lights. Those are so fucking good. <laughs> like... They're my favorite goddamn shit. I like, hate them. A, I hate them. I this is like, going on record. I hate the baked lays. Every time you bring them home, we I'm don't have to start talking about baked lays chips. No, we don't. I, fine, I'll censor Dude, the name. You just said baked. <laughs> I was just thought it'd be funny. No, I'll censor the lays part. I don't care. I ju- I'm just saying. I I just there are so many chips you buy that I want to kill you. For. That's all. That's all. And you know this is a problem. You know this is a huge problem in our. Entire dynamic of life. Well, let's talk about the thing. Well, especially because when you do spend three dollars or four dollars or five dollars, and you're like, "Well, I'm just gonna do it," and you come back with like fucking sun chips. Sun chips, bomb. <laughs> Cheese sun chips, bomb. Fuck off. <laughs> Baked sun chips. So we're just gonna have to censor all. Of Close enough to being as bomb, but Dude, not as bomb. They're disgusting. They rip up your throat. They're disgusting. Other I know ones, Doritos. I don't like original. I don't like original Lay's. Hey, it'll be like every other one. No. Okay, I don't true. care. Why are you going on? You're like the baked is, is the tits. Okay, no, baked they're not. My, baked is the most I disgusting Lay's. I had an obsession lay. of it. They're the most disgusting Lay. They're the most amazing of the Lay's. They're the best chip they've ever come out with, ever. It's the best See, chip. See, this is how you get a bad sponsor. Like when you make you it's like, like how, do a death it, match it's like between how, your your best friend because you disagree on Lay's and you get death matched. Well, it's like Lay. how stacked is better than Pringles, which you also I'm, disagree with. I am like even as shit. They both I can only take like seven of. So they're, I'm kind of even on the mouth gross. It's just stacks have more mouth gross. Well, I'm fine stacks have more with mouth the gross. thickness. But it's so bad because if you get actually thinking about it, you realize you're paying more for the price of the plastic bag or the container and not actually the potatoes themselves. And no one... God. That's... That's the... I, okay. Okay. We've gotten political again. <laughs> and we're talking about food. The two things I said not to do. And then one day it's going to be like the shows we're watching and there's going to be auction houses... And they're going to be like, here are these Pringles canisters for cardboard or whatever we're auctioning at because, I don't know. know. Recycling auctions that had to do with more than just fucking precious metals, so I won't get political again. Um, Dealing with that, you know, but more just a waste recycling thing of like, you just, like people are like, it's sensitive recycling. No, it's not. I hate, I hate the... I hate any BBC thing on hoarders because I know they just put on trash boat because I've seen what they do and then they blame us because they're like, you have oil and I'm like, you have trash boat <laughs> and you're so small and you just keep being like, well, we're not connected to the rest of the ocean. So when we be wave bye bye, <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> it's fucking, I can't see it. It's gone. That was not how it fucking works. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? I mean... If you throw something away, <laughs> it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> Duh. Dude, the fact that I realized that America was taking the blame when I realized that half the world used trash boats, I kind of got concerned. <laughs> well, and that's why, like, the only reason why. God damn it, I said I would get political. <laughs> and that's why I feel like the only reason why their shows are good is because they're trying to create elaborate, like. <laughs> alibis and like <laughs> distractions i don't know like you know like no if you look in like, the back at any upset. bbc show there's just five trash boats going off at all times right to well, america because yeah. it's like distractions and like an upsell of like we're not that bad i swear let me show you someone horrible in america and we'll just talk about the weird people here look, not that look, that's everyone they're here. fat they have a 
They have a bucket of cigarette butts. Ew! Ew! Look at the bucket of cigarette butts! We do not have trash boats! We do not! And like I said, I love how they're not You have boats. a Guinness you know, bed! You know what I love? That they're not boats. That they're floating forklifts. And then they do exactly what the forklift does. <laughs> bye bye! <laughs> it's not even a boat. It's just a floating forklift with trash. And they just. They don't send it off to a trash island. They didn't build a trash island. <laughs> Building, yeah. No, I mean you. I mean you could make like a dock, and fill it of trash and put like grass and terraforming stuff and let it disintegrate in the sun. You could do. You could do that. And I know they talked about doing that, but remember that's when they talked about doing that. It was when I learned about trash boats, and I was like, oh, it's too fucking late to build a trash island. And the ocean like, is the trash right. island. I know that they were like, no, Mo, you were right. Oops, <laughs> my real what? It's just really funny. I know, I sound like a 13-year-old over saying, wait, are you 13? Are you just afraid to say your real name when you do? Because like, they just don't care. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get political there again. Like, let's just talk about everything else and then just completely forget yeah, it. All they do is call us fat and say that it's because we're eating beef. Yeah, you fat fuck. Stop eating all the meat and you know, food well, You ate all the want. dodos first. Yeah, bitches. You know, you came over here before... <laughs> And just mucked it up. More. <laughs> They're exactly the type that would come over and say you fucking ate the bisons into extinction. Yeah, when we brought them back. Yeah, exactly. I'm <laughs> saying they would say that to you <laughs> now. Like we literally, well, we we were like, oh shit, <laughs> they were too delicious. <laughs> you were like, oh no, what do I do? The oh, fuck, they're gone. I didn't think about anything because I'm a dumbass. Yeah, and that's why they eat fucking chips and crisps all the time. And that's the thing, too. They blame us, and they eat these little packets of crisps. I swear to God, I don't know if the people we getting fatter in British documentaries or their chip crisp packs keep getting smaller. Because I swear to God, like, ten years ago, the normal size was, like, this big. And then it was, like, you know, soccer team mom size. And I was like, those... I think they're the same price. But I can't tell if you're just getting fat or on your documentary so the chip bag looks abnormally small. I can never tell. Sorry. Well, didn't go on a meat rant. Man, on a processed food rant. Which one's better? Which one won? Talking about beef or talking about processed thing? Which one do you agree with more? Yeah, I can date myself. Millennials. You can date yourself? How? Date myself. I... I Epic rap battle thing. Oh. You lost it. Woo! They're still going on. You're dating yourself. Oh. Yeah, I'm dating myself that I watched two epic rap battles, and I think it was one between Obama and Romney. You are such trash. Oh, no, no. I think it was one between Obama and McCain. And it was one between uh, just some other thing. But it was around that time. So I'm saying that's how I'm saying I date myself as a dinosaur. <laughs> all right, well, let's get back to the story. <laughs> oh my God, we're cutting all the piss and the long things out. <laughs> hmm. Okay, right after store closing. Quillaran couldn't guess what they had in mind. Both men were charter members of the new gourmet club, and they would want to hold the July dinner in the barn or even in the gazebo. It would mean serving 12 persons at three small tables. No problem, as long as they didn't expect him to cook. Larry Landspeak was a successful merchant who lived with his wife, Carol, in the affluent suburb of West Middle Hum Hummock and they were spark plugs for the theater club as well as every new community project. Pender Wilmot was an attorney without Moose County roots. He had recently moved his young family to the hummocks. He would be spelling for the ladders. The land speaks his daughter was the MD who would spell for the pills. When Larry's station wagon pulled into the yard, 
Quilleran went out to meet the two men and usher them around to the gazebo. The Siamese and a bar tray were already waiting there, and Coco was mimicking the birds' evening song in spirit, if not in the right key. I don't believe it. That cat's singing, <laughs> Pender said. Is this uh, the one that broke up the cheese party last winter? Kind of yes, the I know. The, the cat is singing. Well, it's not the name of the book. It's the name of the series. It's the cat. No, it's just or, the cat. Sorry, who the cat who, who right? Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cat okay. who sang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. It's... No Close one's going enough. to be like, is that cat singing for the birds? No one's going to say that. Oh, you're telling me you haven't watched the many, 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 many things that have done exactly that? Yeah, with a sentence that makes sense, not, is that cat singing for the birds? Or that, oh, I guess they could have been like, oh, I see everyone could win the spelling bee, and they could be like, wow, those cats are singing for the birds. The birds... Of punctuation. The birds of punctuation? Yeah, because everyone won the spelling bee, and it's a baseball movie now, so a bunch of birds fly off, the cats are rat-a-tat-tatting at them, and someone says, wow, those cats are singing for the birds. I'm saying it's a final baseball spelling game movie moment. How do you not see my vision? Well, if you <laughs> explained it first with the flying away birds, I would have understood. So exactly. I said the cats were rat -tat -tat. I know, I'm sorry, I had to do a dove moment for you in your head in the sunset where 50 birds fly off. I'm sorry. Is this the one that broke up the cheese party last winter? Same one. He has a wealth of interests, Quilleran said. He served drinks, one with spritzer, one rum and cola, and a ginger ale on the rocks. Quill doesn't have a lawn, Larry remarked to what? Pender with a triumphant smile. I like everything natural, their host explained. We came to the right place. Quill, as residents of West Middle Hummock and Planet Earth, we came here today with a humble suggestion for the Quill Pens column. You don't have to be humble. I'm always on the prowl for ideas. Well then, this is it. The whole thing about the hummocks, as you know, is the natural landscape, rolling hills, meadows, and pastures, winding dirt roads, quaint wooden bridges, patches of woods lining the streams, and wildflowers on the roadside. Uh -huh. Larry was a man of moderate build with undistinguished facial features. Oh, wow, it, so he's just a circle. <laughs> Average, just, I don't even know what this man looks like. He's a white curtain. If that is not the most... <laughs> Does he have hair of any kind? He have hair. One second. You didn't, like, skip a whole sentence, right? If that is just not the most... <laughs> I am a white woman, and in my hey, hey, erotic... Hey, I think she... I think she wanted them Hawaiians. I think she wanted them... Uh, uh, she looks like one of those bitches who's like, I'm from Spain, but really they mean Portugal, and, like, mostly German, but that kind of situation... Dude, is one of those people who pretends to be Spain... Okay, there are people who pretend to be Spanish because they're dark and mixed with German people. It's a whole breed of people, and that last name screams it. That's all. Yeah. Or no, I think Jackson and Bromley. You name. Mm, I don't know. Fine. I'll read so it. Fine. We'll take our bets. However, this is just exactly what a white woman writing in erotica, being mm. like, "Oh, and by the way, he's not hot." Comes well, I mean, out as. Oh, I, well, I mean, the one thing they said about the new artist girl was she's, what is she? She's, I don't even know what the word they used was. Larry was a man of moderate build with undistinguishable facial features. Or undistinguished. But his great theater voice and the energy that infused him on stage was compelling whenever he expounded a cause. 
but something insidious has been happening in the last few years, he went on. New people are moving to the country and bringing their town ideas with them. They like broad green lawns that have to be fertilized and watered and weeded and mowed twice a week and... What? My God, sprayed green, Pender said. I have a third grader at home who knows more about ecology than I do. And he comes running indoors yelling, Daddy, they're spraying again. He knows all about chemical runoff in the water and pollution in the atmosphere. And it's kids like Timmy who have a future that needs protecting. Quilleran asked, How prevalent is this green blight that you describe? About 30%, but they're very vocal at village meetings. They urge cutting down trees to straighten the roads, widening the bridges, mowing the roadsides once a month, all to make it safer. They tell how Mr. Fetter died in a car crash on a twisting road. They don't mention that his son was driving 70, said Larry. The hummocks weren't intended to be speedways or thoroughfares for 18 wheelers, but that's what they'll become if we don't fight it. Let me add something bizarre, said Pender. Natural landscaping is trending down below, and backyard naturalists are challenging the so-called weed laws oh, yeah. and winning their cases in court. Oh, yeah. But up here, 400 miles north of everywhere, a local politician wants to legislate against native grasses and wildflowers. He wants everyone to have a neat clipped lawn sprayed green. Larry said, he bought the Trevelyan house near us. He also wants the dirt roads paved, and he has a lot of pull. Pender added, he'll get a kickback, of course. This is getting dirty. I'm going home, said Larry, standing up. Who wants the, ro Who wants the roads paved? Quilleran asked. Who bought the Trevelyan house? Ram's bottom. If he's as crooked as people say, why does he keep getting reelected? He saves the taxpayers money by opposing educational and cultural improvements. Then the K fund steps in and underwrites the new facilities. He's got it made. Quilleran walked with them to their car. Think about it. Larry told him. Kevin Dune can tell you a lot about natural landscaping. He's a real pro. And people will listen to what you say, Quill. Yeah, of course they will. End chapter. They have dirt roads, but they have multiple coffee shops. How does that make sense? We've got dirt roads everywhere, and we fucking shit up. We only for once in our entire livelihood got ourselves a goddamn newspaper. And we got an Indian joint for some fucking reason. No, Lucky. I don't, I, like I said, I think they meant Indian. Like, American Indian. I don't think they did, because they talked about, like, curry and naan. Oh, they did? They 100% talked oh, about right, naan. They... I, I, I know, because yeah, when white naan. people talk about naan, it's like something happens inside of them. Yeah. So you can feel it the moment it's written down on the yeah, page. Yeah, it's literally called They've Never Eaten a Spice in the Tomato. <laughs> and even like, you know, I'm pretty sure this is my conspiracy theory. Yeah. I love, like, I've never been to, I've never been to any place here because I can't find it. But, um, like, a, you know, in, in East one. Um, but, like, I love it, and it's overpriced as shit. Always. And, it, for one, like I said, it just it still looks like a cat bowl to me where you get fed in. So oh, it does. It's just, like, one of the ones, you know, the whisker ones that make no sense. Yeah. Um, it just always looks like an oval cat bowl, and so that just makes me laugh. But I like being a cat. So I like being an Indian cat. Um, but no. <coughs> I swear to God, it's, like, good because they just spice up, like, I, I swear to God, <laughs> they fucking cut up potatoes, 
they fucking because this is exactly what it tastes like to me and i think it's bomb because i'm gonna try to remake it okay this is my recipe this is my recipe so if someone try it or i'll try it <laughs> i want to cut potatoes and i want to get chef or <laughs> and i want to get some coconut milk and I want to blend the chef already with coconut milk and maybe with some like almonds or other nuts. Blend it all up, make it all chunky. Obviously, I well, I actually don't need to add tomatoes because it's chef already. And then you put that over some potatoes and peas and rice. And I think that is the average fucking Indian curry that you get in America, which tastes dope, but it's always twelve dollars. And I'm like, you dirty, dirty <laughs> bastard. That is but recipe. I am going to try that recipe. I had that recipe in my head today. I had it in my head like five hours ago. Because I was, I was searching Chef Boyer D for some reason. Oh, it's because there was a mural. Yeah, I just... I just think that's actually the recipe. Because you're telling me it doesn't taste like that. Like, if you added... You know, I'm not saying to not add nice spices, too. You know, you add your good curry fucking powder and you add your, you know, everything you would add to normal fucking curry. Because, you know, if you're Indian, you get spices for, like, like, uh, do you think I'm crazy? Like, if you put, like, turmeric and all those things in the recipe I just said, do you think you could do it? Especially if you added just, like, a little bit of ground, like, of your beef or your meat or your what whatever you make there. Two, just like I, I'm just saying, I think with the noodles and with the coconut milk, I think you can make it just as oh, oh, you can make it just as fucking thick and fucking everything. And I'm gonna fucking try it, or somebody's try it. <laughs> I'm just still confused at what's so mysterious. <laughs> it just still sounds like it's just general small town business. It's Politics? Yeah, I still yeah, don't know. That's We're the scariest the part. Yeah, 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 I know. That's just scarier to me than ghosts, dude. <laughs> I, I know, I guess it's just, you know, I'm sitting here being like, yes, who burned down the barn, but I'm more worried about all the other things that are going on inside well, of now right I'm now. Like, that's what what I mean. fuck? Hey, this book just got so much more interesting. I'm like, whoa, fucking gardening, fucking regulations. I don't like some of that. But I, I don't know how dramatic people are, like... I don't know if anyone ever goes to Stepford Wives or people are just like, can you please not have like 800 tricycles on your front lawn and maybe narrow it down to like five? Well, I always feel like it just, <laughs> that's the thing though. I always feel like, <laughs> sounds so like patriotic, but like, I always feel like that's the start of it. Is that it starts with, we don't want that many trikes in your lawn, and we want your... Well, and then, yeah, someone's like, well, if you made that person clean up their lawn, then why aren't you making that person clean up their lawn? They have cans, and then... Exactly, yeah, they, and then it becomes know, a crazy HOA, and then you yeah. can't have colors, and you can't do anything, yeah, you can't have wind chimes. Yeah, I know, I know, so it's a slow start, I know, I know. You should <laughs> always assume that people want to spray paint the grass green, and fucking make you have communal fucking mailboxes. You just always assume that's their end goal, because it is, and fight it. <laughs> See if they're gonna spray you green at the end. Grass is step one, your step died. I don't, I'm not trying to poof. Am I supposed to, like, am I supp I, I don't know what I am at this point. I just, I don't have any, I usually have an assumption of who did something. And I'm just like, I don't know, someone to do with the land. Like, I don't have a, I don't have a specific someone in mind. I just have a who, the land, the people. I don't know. The fucking book has so short. Ram's Bottom, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I guess we're just supposed to blame Ram's Bottom. I, I don't fucking know. I think that's what we're supposed to hate. Like, it's just been a fun... I mean, like, I just feel like I've been at, like, vaguely interesting city council meetings that I have to vote on things for. But that's also a good experience. So I've enjoyed this book so but, far. Like, I've, like, but, like, <laughs> But then I feel like it's less that I hear around in town. Like, it's like you're just hearing by word of mouth, technically, what's going on. Yeah, but they go to a lot. Like, at least they talk on the phone a lot, and they, like, talk to, like, at least, like, pity people, like, higher up in the... I guess. Like, I, I, I'm just saying, like, it, it. this whole book just feels like, well, people are trying to vote on stuff. You should vote against that. And I'm like, yeah. And so that's a good experience. Uh, <laughs> interesting. Yeah, see, this book scares me more, because I'm like, oh... They're gonna make me spray my laundry. <laughs> that scared me.
people feel afraid of ghosts. No, if my house is haunted, it can be a historical landmark. You can never touch it. <laughs> I want to prove my house is haunted. in the spring and I hate my life. <laughs> I didn't know you could get so itchy. Yeah. It's just my nose, like the outside of it, like under my eyes. And I like I got it last year and I was like, oh, is this what he's always complaining about? So yeah. <laughs> I wish I had those pills. Like the pink ones. <laughs> no, it was these this big Oh my god, like, he's taking flea like away? Zeros or double zeros. <laughs> yeah, that's like a double like zero. <laughs> gel green. Nice. Like this almost <sighs> like between weed and spinach. Like that kind of what dark. What kind of weed, bro? Like that kind I'm saying that dark <laughs> kind of yeah, I get it. Pretty okay. green. I Are guess. you sure it wasn't fucking Nyquil? It sounds like Nyquil to me. No, I don't know what it was. It was in pills. It was. I mean, it could have been Nyquil because some people like. I, I think people just give everything everyone for allergies. I don't know. Then just like you have pestles and you eat it. I, you I, also I, won't shut up about being itchy. <laughs> I don't know. I just know it was. From. Vitamin Cottage. Oh. And it was... Oh, no. You just dated yourself so hard. <laughs> well, it was. It was from no, Vitamin Cottage. No, I know, Cottage. dude. We lived quite a life at Vitamin Cottage. Yeah. And <laughs> I don't know. It was, like, the only thing. I'd take that, and then it would just all go away. Nice. And then it, it was so weird. I cause... really hated when they turned away from being, like... Oh, that sure. was such for one they smelled so much better because it smelled like vitamins and I'm a freak for two it had so many amazing products back then I mean I was young so I liked to just be like ooh color vitamins but they also just they had very good products very good very good company before they went all fucking nuts which is unfortunate like see that's not the time to sell out you don't sell out and say Hey, well, food stores are becoming popular, so let's do away with our medicinal natural store and become more of a hipster joint. No, become a pharmacy. Become a fucking like powerhouse of a natural pharmacy. Hell, even try to get some things fucking approved by at least like national medicalists. So you know we. we that was not the time to sell out. I disagree with selling out many times, and that was not the time. <laughs> Sorry, it was a nice start. I wish it was still the same. Oh, no. When I said I, I just missed those pills, I have no idea what they were. They helped Sucked. really well, and then it was kind of almost like flea away in the way that... Were <laughs> you addicted to natural grocery? No, I'm saying if you took it for, like, a season. I remember I took it for one year. And then it was, like, three to five years till I needed it again. Oh, nice. Like, the shit was really amazing. You could took it daily, and then you were done. And then next seasons, it was like you almost built up an immunity or something to fucking pollen. Because it was like, I did not need it for so long. And then one time it hit me again, like three to five years later, and I needed it. That's also it why I need to join like, some kind of art community because that's like the only way I could be like, "Hi, I know you're on the hellscape," and so we all travel from the same places. So much as I hate it, I'm like, I'm still on the same fucking path. I just changed fucking directions. Fantastic. <laughs> but um, <laughs> tried to go down, you know, down south or wait, down below. Sorry, down I, below. I tried to go down below, <laughs> veered long. Chapter 13. A Saturday night dinner at the Palomino Paddock would be a special occasion on anyone's calendar, and Polly, for her date with Quilleran, wore her pink silk suit and opal jewelry. She glowed with rosy happiness when he arrived at her condo. Pink looks remarkably good on you, he said. 
He had disliked the insipid pink worn by the late Iris Cobb when she was his landlady down below, then at his housekeeper and pickaxe, and finally as manager of the farmhouse museum. It's really hot pink, Polly told him, and I love your outfit. It was a summer suit in his favorite khaki, with a blue shirt and a daring tie, blue, pink, and white. Sartorially, he had come a long way since his days down below. Brutus and Cata came to see them off, looking vacantly at Quilleran when he said, Pax Vobiscum, mm. to Polly, who said, Let's drive your car. It's more appropriate than a van with your pink suit and your opals. Wait, so did he just show up to someone's house and be like, Oh no, we're not taking my car, it's shit. Yes, he okay, did just I, I, I mean, I'm just making sure. <laughs> also, don't forget, he's so goddamn interesting that his favorite khaki... Not only does he have multiple khaki suits, but he has a favorite khaki. Uh, I don't even know what a khaki suit would look like. Boring. <laughs> incredibly, <laughs> incredibly boring. That is the only answer that the man can give you. I think a person could become more boring in the moment they said, my favorite khaki suit. <laughs> Like, my go, favorite Quill. suit, which is a khaki suit, is better than saying my favorite khaki suit. <laughs> that implies you've got too many khaki suits. Oh, God, it's so cold. I know. I'm so hot and I'm so cold. Because it's so warm down below. It's so warm so down warm below. So warm down below. <laughs> <laughs> Let's drive your car. It's more appropriate than a van with your pink suit and your opals. The route lay through quaint villages. Little Hope, early home of Maud Coggin. Wildcat, a community inhabited Mark. entirely by Cuddlebrinks. Black Creek Junction, with its lofty trestle bridge, side of many a train wreck. Across the county border, the terrain was less craggy and more agreeably sloppy. <laughs> Oh. Sorry, I'm really illiterate. More agreeably <laughs> sloped. <laughs> then, <Close enough. laughs> then came Flapjack, formerly a lumber camp and now a public recreation park. Here the route signs pointed left to Horseradish, birthplace of Weatherby Good, and right to Winnie Hills. But, but, it's called Flapjack, right? What if he doesn't know his listeners right? <laughs> Sorry, I had to. Sorry, who the fuck names a park Flapjack? What, did you, I read that right, or I heard that right, right? Well, yeah, it's a whole area. It's, no, it's I was just making sure it was called Flapjack and it wasn't something oh, else yeah. better. <laughs> and right to Winnie Hills and the celebrated Palomino Paddock. En route, Quilleran asked, How are you getting along with Scumble? We're becoming accustomed to each other, and he's making progress. On the canvas, I hope. You're such a cunt. Of course, dear. It's amazing how Paul used red, blue, yellow, and gray to model the contours of the face. He uses yellow, rose, and blue to give life and luster to pearls. Today I was deeply touched when he brought me a gift. A handkerchief that had belonged to his grandmother. It's so delicate. I told him it must be woven of moonbeams and fairies' wings. No, it's because it was a cum rag. Now bitch is just a little worn. <laughs> Quilleran thought. Does he give one to each of his female subjects? What did he give to Commissioner Ramsbottom? His grandfather's flask? He huff he huffed into his mustache. There we go. But that took a long time. We were in the second chapter. It did, we did, we did. We did. One whole chapter without touching his mustache. I'm That's proud pretty of crazy. Quill. No I'm huffing, proud of no Quill. Tuffing. No toughing. <laughs> Close enough. Huffing, toughing, pounding, grinding. 
It sounded questionable. To Polly, he said, I've never heard you wax so poetic. How did he react? I think he was flattered. Actually, I was trying to cajole him into revealing who paid for the commissioner's portrait, but he wouldn't tell. That means the county treasurer paid for it, with your tax dollars and mine. At least he didn't lie. How many more sittings will there be? I just have this feeling Cooler and doesn't pay taxes. Oh, he, well... Uh, I feel like he's a scumbag, that's all. I feel like he ends up paying like $20 in taxes because he's like, I'm a raider. That, that, I just feel like he's a scumbag. I feel like he pays his taxes, but he like is like, oh, but my helmet helps me write. My bicycle helps me ride. <laughs> Everything Why helps does he me think ride. people are so interested in his Everyone's bicycle. interested in me. What it a- takes time. You know, when I walk and get a coffee, that's tax deductible because I'm talking to people. My... You know, no, I know. He doesn't have subjects. The other guy has subjects. Mm. But he has, the whole town is his subjects. He has to talk to get inspiration. Um... So, do you think anyone's ever nerdy? I just realized this book has, like, uh, like music bars on the chapter, like, thingy. Like, it, lo- it looks like that. Oh, like, yeah. Do you think anyone ever, like, writes that? It, like, makes it a little interactive book. A weird, weird... Hey, are there any weirdos out there? If deep, you have a copy... Deep Cat Who fan. Well, yeah, okay, if you have any copies of this book, have you put music notation on This book on isn't it. rare. It's not. I had, there are three, co- there's the third copy from Goodwill in my town. M- not my town, another town. <laughs> but what, what, I'm sorry, do I just not know something? Is, like, a silver light a really fancy bike? Why the fuck would I your think coworkers it's just that it's be surrounding silver. it? I think it's just that it's silver and he thinks he's hot. Because he's got a big old mustache. Well, I mean, that's what I think. Well, yeah. But I just... And he's also just so quirky because he that, wears... That's what I mean. He this wears is... abrasive ties or loud ties. And that's why I think this is Lillian's <laughs> fantasy Jackson of... Probs. Jackson Probs! Lillian Jackson Probs! <laughs> Fucking... I think this is her fantasy of herself. Because she's like, I am so cool. Everyone thinks I'm awesome. They're like, wow, look at you. You're riding your bike yeah, or, to work. Like, is it... It's cool. It's made of silver. <laughs> I've never heard of a person who's like, like I mean, people were like, your bike is If you are just so girl. happy with yourself, though, and you just ride your bike everywhere, and you just write, and you're just an annoying douchebag, are you just, like, living in your own Quillerian world because you're like, I'm happy, I don't give a shit, and you just think everyone thinks you're so cool because you're like, well, I don't give a shit. Because, I mean, that picture, she don't give a shit. <laughs> How many times do you think it took to take that photo? Not too many, because she's a bitch. But not too few, because she's a bitch. Like, mm, and her husband I, took it, right? Do you think she paid someone? Oh, no. Is that her sister-in-law? Or, like, a, some sort... some Someone like an in-law. Um, <coughs> like, co-worker, you know, whatever. Um... Yes, <laughs> you are legally bound to your coworkers <laughs> just as much as your in-laws, and that's what I will say in court. I want to say it took nine times to get okay, 13 times for her to yell, and 17 times to get it right, but it was photo number eight. That, like I said, not too long and not too short, because she's a bit too... Did you say 13 times to yell? No, uh, yeah, nine times to think you got it right, or ten. 13 times for good measure, then you start to yell. 17 times when you think you get it right, and then it was photo number 8 or 9, and then it was probably another one because she was already on the verge of getting mad, so the second photo was probably in between 12 and 17. I know how this works. (laughs) But we're both in agreement that she definitely yelled at someone. At least once. Of course she fucking yelled. I said she's (coughs) a bitch. I know what it's like to have some idiot take photos of you. You yell at 13. (laughs) That's why I take all my photos of books. Just like Lily <laughs> Jackson Prom when I don't have... Oh my god, that'd be great. I don't have a photographer. I just tilt my phone on books. 
Books are my photographer. <laughs> I write books. They write me. I haven't inquired. I don't want him to feel he's been rushed. He says many thin coats of paint give transparency to the human skin. But they take time to dry. I'm getting to love the smell of turpentine. How do Brutus and Catter react? They simply disappear. He always says, I thought you had cats. But they don't make an appearance until he leaves. <laughs> Maybe it isn't only the turpentine. Oh, Quill, you're so cynical. Does he ever say anything about his forebears? Some of the good folk up here aren't always descended from the ancestors they claim. Did he say anything about this grandmother of his? Where do you suppose she got the handkerchief? I'll ask him, she said impudently. I'll tell him that Mr. Quilleran wants to know, badly. Pause and take a break. There's a pause on the page, so drink up, babe. The Palomino looked like a working stable, and the interior was down to earth, with bales of hay standing around and tack hanging on the walls. <coughs> Polly and Quilleran <laughs> were seated at a preferred table in a stall, and menus were presented by an enthusiastic young stable girl moonlighting as a server. God, I thought her name was going to be Moonlight, being as there's a monkey in this town. <laughs> There were no prices on Polly's menu, but they were known to be dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign in the restaurant ratings, meaning extra expensive. The evening special was tenderloin of ostrich with smoked tomatoes, herbed polenta, and black currant coolis. Wait, is that all on the same plate? I believe so. That sounds fucking disgusting on the same fucking plate. You know, that really does. You can't just put fancy foods together. Goodbye. And it's not fancy, it's just spices. <laughs> Are you sure it's legal to eat ostrich? Polly asked the oh server. Oh my god. Polly asked the server. Not a joke to Quilleran. God, she's done. But he wants to bone her, right? Like, this is what hurts me. I'm Wait, like, does he want to bone her? Sorry, everyone's He bones it. her. Okay, no, no, I'm just making... Currently. No, 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 I... No. There are a couple. Dude, dude, dude. <laughs> I'm making sure, because all the names... Dude, I'm sorry. It's like walking around here. Everyone's a Polly and an Ollie and a Sandra and a... And I'm like, I need help. I didn't know if that was her name. I was just making sure he was on I, I thought he was being too flirty, but Quilleran is always flirty, and she, he is, see, she is. She is Lillian Jackson Brown Quilleran. So, always being a fucking flirt. So, didn't know, and yeah, uh, she's dumb. Why does he want to bone her? I don't know. I know, she's just so innocent. She's just so dumb and innocent, I guess. Quilleran with your big old mustache. Isn't she like a teacher? I, yeah, but she's just so sweet and innocent. Blah, 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 blah. But I'm not saying she's fucking 15. I'm saying she's sweet and innocent and dumb. And also, um, if Quilleran doesn't say, <laughs> if only she knew there was kangaroo and ostrich cat food on the market, she might lose her shit. If he doesn't say something posh, like fucking that, he doesn't love his cats, and he's not really cultured. So I'm gonna prove... Me self right. <laughs> Was that shit around in 98? Yes. Dude, we are talking about natural grocers just less than 10 minutes ago. I was I, kidding. The answer is always yes. No, no, no. I'm saying I think it was more prevalent. No, that, that's what I'm saying. But it, because, like, vitamins and shit were so, like, in, in, like, the 70s or the 90s and everyone did do their actual, like, MLMs with their fucking... Still the same oil, still the same vitamins, but... I just think it was better and people actually went through more hippie niches and then learned more and actually started. Like, I think it was more prevalent than actually this would be like a health nut. I mean, think of all the blogs you find that you find tips and tricks of how to do like a bunch of fucking pet and cat health. They're always like, last time there was an update, it was 2002. That's true. 
So I think it was more fucking prevalent like back then, which makes me so fucking pissed off. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to prove him right. Because <laughs> he's also, he's a cultured man, dude. If he doesn't know, <laughs> I ain't no cultured man and I know about that shit. <laughs> and I am pretty, okay, I'm okay. I'm like medium cultured. Mm-hmm. Like a mushroom. <laughs> Half-baked mushroom. It seems rather, rather untoward. The birds, she was told, were raised on a farm especially for the better restaurants. Is that better? Like, I'm just saying, I don't, I don't give well, a fuck, but I'm just saying it's really... Weird to Why? imagine an ostrich no, meat no, farm. No, it's, it's not, because there are ostrich farms. Where do you think the meat comes from? I don't but get I'm ostrich saying, ever. Dude. I want it, but I don't get it. Dude, they got kangaroo and ostrich. They didn't have ostrich? Yeah, they did. you telling me I was just too cheap, I didn't buy it? Yeah, we did. We bought the rabbit, we bought the ostrich, we bought the kangaroo. Oh, right, sorry. Yes, yes, we did. I'm talking about the cat food. That's why I said if Quilleran doesn't say there's fancy cat food, he's not a cultured man. Oh, sorry. I meant, like, actual for me to eat. No, ostrich. we've never eaten a kangaroo. They, I'm saying my cats have eaten kangaroo and ostrich. I knew that. I have. No, I knew that. I thought you were saying we had eaten ostrich, and I was saying where. Jesus Christ, no, I wish. <laughs> but, um, but, no, I, that's why I said if he doesn't say there's a fucking cat, ostrich, and kangaroo in fucking food, one, he doesn't love his cat, and two, he's a dumb dumb and not cultured. That's what I was saying. I said, and that's why I thought cat food, good ones were more prevalent back then. So, he's a bitch. Not entirely convinced, she ordered a vegetarian curry. Wait, so do you have a problem with eating meat or just eating an ostrich? I'm gonna go with the latter... But, but like, then ask why you didn't get another meat option. If you were, like, if you were thinking of getting meat. And then oh, yeah, you sorry. Like, it was well, also just really classist. Why would they, why would I care where the ostriches are going? I care about the sustainability and the, are they humanely treated or ostrichly treated? And... <laughs> are like i don't like he said they go to the better restaurants right he was flexing on his own shit right no, he said they were raised on a farm especially for the better restaurants yeah the what's up why do i care about what is like yeah i guess you mean oh the restaurants i'll pay more for sustainably sourced stuff. i mean i guess that's probably the 98 way of saying oh no, no, no ours sourced. are specifically grown for your stomach yeah, but wouldn't it be better to cut the niche market out and make everything sustainable? That's all. I hate when people flex on, well, I have a pri And I mean, yeah, you support private farms and, of course, small town. I want to buy a fucking cow for winter so bad because I want the one where the farmer keeps it for me. And then he sends me the meat or I go get it. And I'm like, I don't have to keep the cow. I can just keep shopping at your house. I want that setup. It's a little more expensive, avo, but it sounds so fucking good. But I it's like a little more expensive. It's like if I probably totaled it, it, no, and, what feed and care costs would be. But I, I okay, it's not have farmer do it or buy cow. I know you think in polar opposites. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you just go feed Jesus? Well, I'm like yeah, I'm no, I meant the one of the things. Care, it's, right? No, I meant no, I meant no. No, I meant the ones where they kill the fucking cow and you take the whole cow versus the ones oh, you where mean like they, they cut it up for me. store the cow or they give you all the cut up parts and you can decide if you want the n not other part. And that's why I'm saying it's more expensive because you don't get the whole cow. And you, that's because oh. that's, that's, that's it's more expensive because you just get... The meat, and it's not like, oh, you, you can ask for the hooves, you can ask for whatever you want. It's just, you have to ask what you do for it, and so it makes it more expensive because the hang price goes wonky. So I'm saying that one's a little more expensive because I don't want to bring a whole cow home because I ain't put <laughs> strap tarp over the top of my car and getting it dead. Why not? <laughs> Aren't they like I heavy? The whole damn cow. Aren't they heavier than our car? No. 
I thought a cow was like one and a half ton. Or wait, a cow is not. A cow is, a cow not is not over 3,000 pounds. pounds, you <laughs> sorry, crazy ass. A cow ass. is not too bad. Oh, I'm sorry. Back in my day, we had mammoth cows. Yeah, you did have mammoth cows <laughs> weighing fucking 3,000 pounds apiece. Jesus Christ. Sorry, I don't know why I thought the cow weighed like a ton and a half for a second. Quilleran took a chance on the big bird. Medium rare. Ooh. She asked, It was gonna stop here, mustache. Sorry. What have you been reading lately, dear? Mark Twain. A rider after my own heart. That A to Z reference book you gave me has fired my interest. Eddington is dredging up all the Mark Twain he can find. Right now I'm reading Roughing It. That's the one with the story about the big gray cat called Tom Quartz. If you'll forgive the trivia, she said, Theodore Roosevelt had a cat by that name. Gay. Well, he got it from Roughing It, which was published in 1872. Tom Quartz hung around Quartz Mines. One day the miners were getting ready to blast and didn't know he was sleeping on a gunny sack in the shaft. The explosion blew him into the sky tumbling end over end. He landed right side up, covered with soot, and walked away in disgust. His attention wavered as a man and woman were shown to a stall across the room. Then he asked, What were they gossiping about at the library this week? The pennant race, nothing else. My assistant's husband is spelling for the Oilers. How about the workshop? Did it teach your patrons to love the electronic catalog? Polly groaned. Only one attended, and there are rumblings of unrest among the volunteers. In fact, two of the oldest resigned. All the staff members, who were younger, loved the computers, but, as I told you, I prefer the old card catalog myself. But since we all have to swing with the times, why not do something else to captivate the general public? You have to admit it's a grim old building, and the chairs are too hard. Modern libraries go in for color, comfort, Mm -hmm. and a friendly look. Wait. Wait. Is it Quilleran? Why does it seem like he wants to make the library so colorful, like the lawns? It's Quilleran. That's why conspiracy. It's all Quilleran. It's Everything all Quilleran. Everything is Quilleran, and he frames everyone in every book. That's He's a what it bitch. Is. Oh, that'd be great, actually. If that was the whole series, that'd be dope. Can you imagine that? Like you release it on like your twenty seventh book, just final fucking thing. Oh no Some no other... no no! It'd be dope if you just keep reading. The fucking antics of a fucking madman every book, and he just keeps ruining small towns. Well, that would be funny. No, you just I, that would be dope. If I just walked into a book of a madman with two Siamese cats, uh, oh, that's dope. No wonder people like it. And no, it would also make sense with why people like our reading. Be like, it's like Quillerans reading it. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy ass. There are two of them. <laughs> Fran Brody could give you some ideas when she gets back from vacation, if ever. What, because you killed her? See, this makes sense. (laughs) Exactly. Fitting perfectly. (laughs) The entrees were served, and they applied themselves to the tastefully arranged plates of food. Quilleran said the ostrich tastes exactly like filet of beef. Polly said... Everyone loved your column on hen's eggs and the tribute to Mrs. Fisheye. Do you have any other surprises lurking up your sleeve? I won't tell. I'm raising a crop of butterflies in a box, hoping to write something intelligent on the subject. So far, they don't show much promise, but Phoebe Sloan is moving and can't keep her incubator. So now I'm feeding caterpillars. 
which will metamorphose into chrysalises, which will metamorphose into painted ladies, yeah. which will be released to lay more eggs, which will produce more caterpillars. Wow. He what? learned the birds and the bees. <laughs> Good God. Like, that was an awkward sentence. I never know if Lillian is bubbling all around the place. And she's like, and then the morphos into this. No, that's what I mean. That's why this is that. her. Because I forget, dude. I'm like, no one could be. No one could be that annoying. And then I remember certain fat people. That I've known. And then I remember certain fat people were smart, or at least were smarter book-wise, and talked fucking even more. And then I remember that you would say that whole paragraph if you remembered it, because you're like, I learned this today. I am coloring. I am this. Why is this a personality? Shut up. I know. You won't shut up. I don't care. I don't do this at grocery stores. I do this in my home for like, you. You just say, I'm going to write a piece on the caterpillars. Well, you say, I'm going to write a piece on the caterpillars. Her incubator broke. And so I get to watch them grow. Yeah, or I, so I get to hatch them or I get to... I get to watch the cycle. Yeah, and then she's like, oh, you're going to release them, right? And he's like, well, of course, that's what she told me to do. Like, Conversation I'm, I'm, done. I'm like half expecting her to just write Polly to say... Wow, I didn't know that before. Or I'm just half expecting. Wow, that. I'm so expecting. Or sorry, I'm so expecting. <laughs> no, or wow, I'm so surprised how much you've learned about butterflies, Quillerin. Please suck me. I don't know. Suck is suck me, me, me. Butterfly feeders. Those are my fingers. I put nectar on the tip. Suck those. Pretend to be a butterfly, Quillerin, with your mu- Oh, he's got little whiskers like a butterfly. Exactly. God, it's coming together. He's a serial killer butterfly. Sorry, that's my new theory. Would you excuse me for a moment, Polly? I'm not in the habit of doing this, but I'd like to speak to someone with malice of forethought. He walked across the room to the stall where a large man with a bloated face was sitting across from an attractive young female companion. Excuse me, Mr. Ramsbottom. It's hard to catch you in the course of a normal day. I'm Jim Quilleran of the something. I know, I know, the man said with political affability mixed with annoyance. I'd like to make an appointment with you for an in-depth interview covering your 25 years of public service. It's ups and downs, so to speak. I hear there have been some interesting downs. The commissioner waved the intruder away with an impatient gesture. Don't bother me this year. See me in election year. Quilleran returned to his table, thinking. At least he knows he's being watched by the hungry press. Sorry, he said to Polly. Shall we order dessert? Pause and take a break. There's a paw on the page, so drink up, babe. I like how he didn't even let her respond. Dude, yeah. He was just like, caterpillars, 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 goodbye. I'm back. Let's get dessert. Well, his name is Jim. I always forget his name is Jim. Could you imagine being named Jim... Strange ass fucking villain in some kind of Alice in Wonderland spinoff. Yeah. Last name. That's like just so weird. But. I know he's talking to Rams bottom, so I don't know. Why, why anyway, is he still anyway, called by his last name? No one else in this book is ever called by their last names mm-hmm. unless he, they're referred he, to he, as he, a mister. I think he's the villain. Well, I like guess not like, yeah. Be like, oh, Mr. Q! Dude. But those are like fangirls Dude. and bullshit. Everyone's fangirls. No, I'm saying everyone else is just like, hey, Quill Well, yeah, because hey, everyone, Quill. Yeah, because those are men. And I know, because he writes. He's so cool, because you can call him Quill. Yeah, I know. He's hot. He's an extension I bet of he, my do you think male he ever persona. Does, do you, okay, this sounds like you're talking first person. You I'm saying Lillian Jackson yeah, Brown's male persona. Anyway. The Quill print reaches from her clit all the way up to the tip 
of the pen. Yeah. In a moon-like pattern, if you will. <laughs> or a shape, like, like a crescent moon. Well, yeah, she's just able to, I mean, because it goes more like that, so... You know, see, this doesn't work for a podcast. You see, this doesn't work for a podcast. It goes like this. <laughs> so then, you see, this is what happens. It, it extends. And then it comes all over the mustache that manifests. <laughs> and then she writes all over the page with it. Because that is the fusion that happens with every single one of these books. But also, no, I was thinking of Japanese fetish equilibrium. Nothing perverted. He just writes fucking Kana in Fujoshi with his fucking mustache because that's how cultured he is. Because I bet he could just slap the page with fucking Japanese fucking ink and fucking write a fucking novel. Isn't that the hottest porner you ever thought of? Hey, girl. <laughs> oh, I know Katakana. <laughs> I'm going to do some Katakana down there. Yeah, no. Here you gonna come. Anyway. Speaking of sloppy kind of mouth work, who the fuck, like, who the fuck talks about a restaurant or anywhere that's not, like, a payphone or a bathroom or somewhere that's not a really tight fucking space? A stall. Because, you know, when he's, like, he sees him with a fucking hot young chick in a stall, and he's like, Hello! I, too, am joining the stall. <laughs> like, who just... Most people just say a booth. No, no, that's what I mean. Most people say a booth, uh, you know, stool chair, anything... That, that, well, but that's the thing, though. I don't know if... Yeah. No. I don't know if it's a stall because I don't know if this thing is. It sounds so like she's skipping over the fact that it's like a horse girl's paradise of a s- restaurant or something. Oh, wait, there was something mentioned before that I asked that. I think well, like chapters it's called before. like. <laughs> I mean, it's called the Palomino. It said, yeah, it looked like a working stable. And the interior was down to earth with bales of hay standing around. Oh, when I heard that, I thought like... I think they're actually in horse stalls. I I am so uncomfortable. Like, they just (laughs) took horse stalls. Yeah, I know, I know. Hay bale seats and put chairs and put tables in the middle. But this... Is the Why fa- is there no trough? This is the fanciest thing Pickaxe has to offer. That's really fancy. Like, I would say that's a lot to offer, though. Like, that's not a small town. Guy. Shut up. No, I'm saying that's just not a small Shut town. Shut up. Guy. This is the fanciest thing yeah, I get it. Pickaxe has to offer. Yeah. But this man has been shit-talking barbecue the entire book. You are in a stall. The barbecue joint is a regular yeah, sit-down like, I, restaurant. I, I, this is a I, stall, like, stable I, restaurant. I, I, I think this is a shit goes by. I think so. I do not know. I don't know because people wrote parody books of it, so I don't know what's real. Well, I don't know if it is a parody book. Like, I don't know if this is a really popular book. The only reason I don't believe <laughs> it's a shit post is because I don't believe she knows fuck all about cats. But maybe that's how she's trying to write it. Well, and she's I, trying to write it like a, you know, you know, it'd be a really good idea. By the way, writes about cats. It'd be a really good idea, like if we read about authors once in a while instead of just picking up books. Why? No, I don't. It's the best part because then you go on a journey of you're like, oh, <laughs> I like it. That's how memes used to work in the and then 60s. People are like, they found you, and they're like, that's cool, and you're like, you like this book? That's interesting. Yeah, and I found cool. it for a dollar fifty. Yeah, and, but I'm saying this. I'm saying, but if it's like a whole, like like I said, I just hope. I mean, that I'm would be great. Luke. I mean, that'd be great, and that would also be a great parody fucking series where he is just a maniac every fucking time, every time. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's just, it's really funny that a place that just serves you ostrich and polenta. But yeah, but that was special. That's special. 
on hay bales in a stall. I don't know. I all I'm envisioning is a stall with hay bales and a table. That's all I yeah, can I'm see. I'm so uncomfortable. Why is it a horse for horse? I wasn't understanding. I thought they meant like <clears throat> it looks like rustic. What, like, as what, people not, would like, say, rustic or like just like there was hay on the ground. Like it looks like. Well, there's horse. There's those horse metals. Or coppers. No, that's like, that's not rustic enough. That's that's spots. fucking yank shit, dude. That's yank shit. Oh, yeah, they're, they're horseshoes around. It it looks like a yeah. It looks like the storage shed for everything that you you know you you keep all the nice clean bales of hay. You keep all the horseshoes. You keep the storage. That that kind of rustic. I thought that's what the restaurant looks like. I I. I I don't know. It just sounds straight up like a goddamn. I think it's just a barn. I think it's straight up barn. It's but like not cute, like horse girl freaky. Like th- men are getting hand job raped at this restaurant, and we all fucking know it. And yet, this is the good place. And the yeah, for indoor, Lily Jackson Brom, it's and a, the indoor <laughs> non hay bale. All, I think, probably, you know, I'm, I'm guessing, like, every, for some reason, barbecue joint, wood everything on the inside. That place, barbecue joint. Like, I, I know this is a satire book. It's like comedy, right? It doesn't have a genre. Books need genres. Books need more genres. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I, it's hard, some, sometimes... Dude, a lot of, like, every day, I think, every day I read this book, I'm like, this is satire, right? (laughs) On Saturday afternoon, while Polly sat for the portrait artist, Quilleran sat with the Siamese and the New York Times. He always picked up the Sunday edition at Sloan's Drugstore, where they saved a copy for him under the counter. On this occasion... Mrs. Sloan was alone in the store and eager to talk. Where's your shiny bike, Mr. Q? She asked. <laughs> Sorry, I just left it under the counter. Like, he is getting porno, right? Like, I mean, who <laughs> saves a copy under the counter if there's not something slipped? Like, the, see, it's like a ship hose, right? Like, it is a ship hose. Like, it has to be a ship. I'm not stupid. I a ship hose. don't know. I don't know. I'm not a lady. I don't know. <laughs> No one ever knows. That's the whole point. But then it becomes lost, and then it becomes scary, and... And then there's Snape White. Yeah. Not that that happened at the shit pose. No, God, no. That but, was not. No, that's sad. No, I'm just saying that... I'm just saying there's... That's... I'm saying when you invite patient, in too much... No, that's, that's patient zero gone too far. You need to eradicate the problem. It always goes to that. That's all. Also, I'm saying you just can't let things go too far. Never on Sunday, Mrs. Sloan, he explained. The newspaper weighs more than the bike. It might damage the spokes. Well, you're six foot nine and a half. <laughs> What kind of weird? <laughs> like, I love what? This what so is this? Much. I don't even know. This is some kind of showing up, over talk, bragging. <laughs> My bike up. is so light. My bike is so light. It's lighter than a newspaper. That's no, the best. No, it's a little stack of newspapers. It's so big. And also, I don't know. It's a newspaper. Yeah, but there, you know, are about 12 pages in a newspaper. It's 12 pieces of paper. Oh my god, why are you... (laughs) How light is this damn bike? Why is that his bragging? Because he's his fucking quillery and you're supposed to hate him. I know it's... Am I... I I hope so. Because I do. uh, Well, like, if this was the goal... I love this book. It, like, if it was, like, your fever dream of douche, you, it's fucking fantastic. But, minus points because he does have a mustache. But he does stroke it, so plus points. <laughs> we were supposed to get rain, she said ruefully. My lawn needs it badly. I should really put in a sprinkler system. No, you have problems enough in this town. <laughs> Bucket. 
I mean, watering can. That's, that's what I mean. Evolved bucket. Bucket is a bucket. <laughs> what are you talking about? Bucket with a trash can with hole or trash bag with holes in it. <laughs> Where do you live? West Middle Hummock. And I have an acre of the most beautiful grass. Oh my god. Do you have a nice lawn, Mr. Q? Hell yeah. No, but he has no lawn, right? Ha ha. I'm afraid not. Uh -huh. I'm a nature boy. I let nature take its course. Oh, wait. You mean you just don't have a bitch ass lawn? Oh, okay. Never mind. Do you mean you let it go to weeds? She asked in mild horror. Okay, wait. Everyone's obsessed with him, but no one's fucking looked at his house. No one knows where he lives. That's... Okay, whatever. No one knows where he lives. That's, that's fucking weird. <laughs> Frankly, I don't know what weeds are. The landscape gardener has put in native grasses and wildflowers and forbs. He added mischievously, enjoying her perplexed frown. Do you have any copies of the New York Times left? I always save one for you, Mr. Q. You know that. Everyone's pleased to know you're sponsoring a team in the pennant race. And having Dr. Diane spell for you is somewhat of a coup. Well, I don't know about that, but she's a dear, sweet person, just like her parents. They're lucky to have her turn out so well. Our assistant pharmacist is spelling for us, too, and we hope to have our daughter, but she decided to spell for the art center, which is understandable, except that it was a disappointment. They have such a large membership to recruit from, and we are so small. Why not get the superintendent of schools, Quilleran suggested. He'd make a good pill. She burst into laughter. Lyle Compton, always under attack by teachers, parents, and politicians, had adopted the persona of an old grouch, although he had an under uh, underlying sense of humor. I think most people do. Wouldn't that be funny? Do you think he would? Mrs. Sloan asked. I'll ask him. It'll be a crowd pleaser, and he likes an audience. We'll appreciate it to no end, Mr. Q. She rang up his sale, which included mouthwash, a shaving lotion, then said in a sadder voice, What do you think of our daughter's choice of career, Mr. Q? We'd hope to get her into health care, it's it's so secure, but all she can think about is painting. Once again, Quilleran was being expected to play the pundit. Why? Because he wrote a column? Because he had inherited money? He found it somewhat absurd. Well, Phoebe's doing something she enjoys enormously. And she does it well. And it makes people happy. I know one collector who has 18 of her butterflies. What more could you want for your daughter? I guess I could wish that she chose her friends more carefully. I know you don't have children, Mr. Q, but can you understand the pain of a parent whose only child goes off of the man of dubious reputation? Oh, yeah. It's not just that he has no education or oh, goals. Uh, we have other goals. doubts about him. In a community like this and with contacts like ours, we hear things, you know? What can I say? He's handsome and Phoebe is vulnerable. This is presumptuous of me, I know. But I wish you could talk some sense into her head. She thinks highly of you and she'd listen. Quilleran said, You have my sympathy, I assure you, but I've always believed that young people of her age have to make their own choices and take responsibility for their decisions. He was interrupted by the jangling bell on the front door as two customers entered, chattering noisily. He and the storekeeper exchanged apologetic glances and he muttered a vague promise as he moved away. Leaving the store, 
he was grateful that he had only two cats who could be banished to their room if they created a problem. I think you mean their closet because you're abusive. I remember the closet. You the closet. The closet that's like five by five. No. You're thinking of the nice one. Oh, he's got a bad one too, doesn't he? Remember, he shoves in the pantry. Oh, right, because he's an absolute dickhole. <laughs> yes. Cool, fantastic. Anyway, pause and take, take a, a break. break. There's a pot on the page, so drink up, babe. <laughs> so, I, I I just never know if it's a, a factor with the publishers or a factor with crazy-ass Lillian Jackson Braun. But some chapters will have so many paws, mm. and some chapters will have, like, one. Mm. And I'm just, why? That's my biggest question, just why? But, I mean, I guess it makes it, especially, I mean, especially as a drinking game, it does make it, it, it keeps oh, it yeah, fresh. Yeah, can... When Quilleran unlocked the kitchen door and let himself in, he was alarmed by a scraping sound elsewhere on the main floor. He dropped his packages and hurried to the foyer. Yum Yum was batting, something about the stone floor. A yo-yo. A few days earlier, he had tossed it into the wastebasket when the cats reacted with boredom. Oh, oh look at that! It's almost like I have a fucking recorded thing saying, you wasteful asshole, cats play with things at different times. Wow. That's interesting, Quill. Clink. Clinky, clinky. Cat abusey. God. He's a bit. They got sad. it out of the waste. It has to be sad. That's how much. Be the that's how much they hate him. They got the fucking yo-yo out of the waste basket. Yeah, no, that that's fantastic. I love this. I love these cats. The cats are the main characters. I changed my mind. I changed my mind completely on this book, but I. The cats I, are always the main characters. Yeah, but I'm saying they were such. Si I, maybe that's why that's the first review. Being like, nose let them cat out of the bag. This kill Quillerian. That'd be great. <laughs> I want that. That little scamp had fished it out, hiding it under the sofa while awaiting an auspicious time to use it as a hockey puck. She was smart in her way, inventive, mischievous. While Coco sensed the who, why, what, and where of crime and tried to communicate his suspicions, she hid the evidence under the sofa or the rug. Quilleran picked her up and stroked her soft fur. When we run Cata for vice president, he said, you can be campaign manager. I want to call this cute, but he's insane. <laughs> 90s bitches and there's incessance to say he said in the middle of a sentence they're saying. Oh, that's what he said it. When we do this, he said, You're still speaking! <laughs> yeah, but then people thought that was right back then. Dude, do I even get in grammar? Dude, I on? know that. I that's why I'm angry. extra angry, because it's what's considered correct at every time. Like, they're... And I'm not getting political, but, like, people talk about the law, like, the, the governments and everything. People don't talk about raiding law and, like, you're, like, practically arrested. Practically in the raiding community if you break the new law that got passed of, oh, you can say, he said, halfway sentence now. But to not in three years, now you will be smited, you stupid, illiterate idiot. And that's why also, yeah, I know, not to get political, but that's also why I hate literacy things. Cause it's a fucking in, joke that changes with time. And I'm like, ooh, ooh, what, you trying to get the illiterates used to the law? Yeah, cool, law changes. Why do I talk to her? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> After changing into casual clothes, he took the Siamese and his Sunday paper to the gazebo. He was reading, and they were monitoring the airborne traffic when their fawn-colored necks stretched, brown ears swiveled, and black noses pointed due east. 
Quilleran thought. Sunday afternoon trespassers? They had the nerve to unlatch the gate and drive past the private sign. They were coming up for some unauthorized sightseeing. Frowning, he went out to confront them. As soon as the vehicle came into view, he recognized it. The commercial van with discreet lettering on the side. Bushland Studio. Bushy, what brings you in the back way? He called out to the photographer. It's confusing, Quill. Front way from Main Street leads to your back door, and the back way leads to your front door. I'll have the barn turned around. Come on into the tiger cage and have a drink. What? What's your pleasure? Do you have a gin and tonic? I have everything. Talk to the cats while I'm bartending. You're insane, my fucking sir. And not in, like, a fun way. No, like, I, I, I don't know. He makes me uncomfortable. This guy is touching me. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's that he thinks everything he says is like socially correct and not weird. I I think it's that he thinks he's not weird. That that's that's also why I don't know the ship host because I'm like, is he insane or is he supposed to not be weird? I don't know. <laughs> Who's insane? <laughs> John Bushland was a talented young photographer who was losing his hair early. God. Hence his affectionate nickname. On several occasions, he had tried to shoot the Siamese for an annual cat calendar, but oh. they had been... <laughs> well, I thought it meant, like, the cat game calendar, like, every year they go around me, like, let's go coolest cat in town. <laughs> this is November's kill. Well, that's different. <laughs> I don't know. He had tried to shoot the Siamese for an annual cat calendar, but they had been pointedly uncooperative. No matter how cautiously he raised his camera, they instantly rolled from a lyrical pose into a grotesque muddle of hind legs and nether parts. That's so cute. That's the cutest fucking roll. <laughs> it is. Why would you not want a cat? Yum, 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 <laughs> After every disappointing effort, he said, I'm not licked yet. When the tray arrived with the drinks, he raised his glass in a toast. Oogly wah wah. That's a Zulu blessing, or so I've been told. No, that's some fucking language. It is some fucking language. <laughs> God, you racist bastard. You ain't no Oogly fucking... Oogly-wah-wah! Wait, what mm -hmm. is it? Simology? No, it's, it's the simoleon. money. No, Simo it's right. that's, no, that's, that's the money. money. That's money. Si is it Simlish? Simish? Yeah, something like that. That's Simlish, you fucking racist! <laughs> Better get it confirmed in writing before you get into trouble, Quilleran advised. How's everything at the art center? Are the crowds breaking down the doors? Is Beverly making them take off their shoes? That's why I came up here. Did you go to the opening of the ch click club? <laughs> I tried, yeah. but it was too crowded. Well, there's been a break-in. Last night. No forced entry, just trespassing. What did they take? Nothing. Not even a light bulb. But they used some of the equipment, and there was a smell of cigarette smoke. Hmm. Quilleran mused. Any theories? Does Beverly know about it? Oh, God, yes. She went through the roof. We decided not to notify the police. Publicity would only lead to more trespassing, and somehow we think this is an inside job. Ooh. Do individual members of the Click Club have keys to the building? No. Mostly they attend group functions. But there's a privilege key available for members who want to use the equipment to screen their own film. 
They sign for it and return it to the office when the screening is over. No one had signed it out for last night, but someone might have borrowed the key during the week and had dupes made. Beverly is looking into that possibility. I feel sorry for her. She takes these things so hard. Had they misused the equipment? No, they just failed to put it back properly. They'd used the VCR and the slide projector, and they left beer cans and cigarette butts in the wastebasket, obviously ignoring the no smoking signs. Quilleran asked, Why do you think, or what do you think they were viewing? Probably not Gone with the Wind. Probably some kind of underground trash. Question is, will they be back next weekend for another meeting of the Saturday Night After Hours Art, Film, and Beer Drinking Society? Bushy jumped up. Thanks to the drink, I've got to get back to my dark room. Freelancers work an eight-day week. Quilleran walked with him to his van, and the photographer said, Say! I must have found, a w- or I may have found a way to shoot those ornery kids of yours. There was a camera lens patented a few decades ago. With a gun. For use by photographers exploring primitive regions. With a gun. <laughs> Some cultures think they'll lose their souls if their picture is taken. This was a right angle lens employing mirrors. If I could find one in a vintage collection of photo equipment, the cats wouldn't know I was shooting them. <laughs> Sounds so bad. <laughs> Horrible plan. Would it fit today's cameras? I'd have to get an adapter. If you can find such a lens, I'll buy it for you. Bushy, full speed ahead. Oh. Pause and take a break. There's Paul the page. So drink a babe. Later in the afternoon, Quilleran felt the need for exercise, and he walked down the lane to the art center, first taking the precaution of returning the Siamese to the barn. It was nearly five o'clock, and there were a few cars on the lot. Indoors, he went to the gallery to look at the wood carving he had bought. To his indignation, it was gone. He went looking for Beverly Forfar. Is he going to start rhyming? What is going on? <laughs> no, he can't Lillian! <laughs> it's in my office, she explained. Too many people wanted to buy it. They don't understand what the red dot means. One man got rather nasty, so I took it out of the show. May I take it home now? He asked. Not until the whole exhibit is dismantled. Mm -hmm. Everything has to be checked out in proper order. How was the turnout today? Well, it's always good on Sundays. People come after church or after brunch, so they're decently dressed. Goddamn classist. One of her complaints was the sloppy attire of many visitors. She herself always looked spiffy, to use Quilleran's word. He asked, What's the public's reaction to the photo show downstairs? She groaned. Some unauthorized persons got in last night. We try so hard to give this town a fine facility, and someone has to abuse the privileges. But there's good news, too. Daphne's nudes have been returned. All of them? He recalled Thornton's experience in the shipwreck tavern. <laughs> About half of them. And they were returned to the bin they, where they belong. Don't let anyone touch them. It might be possible to get prints. Would we all have to be fingerprinted? That would be embarrassing. The phone rang in her office, and Quilleran went to see the butterfly girl. Phoebe was sitting alone, concentrating on her palette. 
Good afternoon, he said quietly. I came to report on the caterpillars. They're stuffing themselves and getting fatter and sussier every day. Oh, hello, Mr. Q, she said listlessly, glancing at him briefly and then back at her work. He thought, she's tired. She goes to the bar nightly and stays till closing. And who knows what they do after hours? He said, how's Jasper? She shrugged. He's happy anywhere, as long as he gets his peanuts. I have a condo in the village. I'm in the Willows, which is your building. The clusters have been named after indigenous trees. The birches. The birches had more luxuries than the other clusters. The construction was no better, but the details were posh. The marble lavatories and walk-in closets. I hear you're spelling for the d daubers. Who else is on the team? Thornton Haggis and Beverly. Heh, <laughs> you'll have a good time. Well, see you at the warm-up tomorrow night. Leaving the building and walking home, Quilleran wondered about Phoebe's lackluster spirit. She was not used to nightlife. She was feeling guilty about defying her parents. She was sulking. Beverly had succeeded in evicting Jasper and the Caterpillars and may have pressured her into wearing the official smock. Dull blue, long-sleeved, button-cuffed. It made Phoebe look drab. She probably felt drab, too. Pause and take a break. What? There's a paw on the page, so drink up, babe. Told you she's fucking crazy. <laughs> or they're fucking crazy. Everyone's crazy. And it's like, that's what I mean. They, they're, they want this to be drink. a random drinking game. Because the paws come up at the exact times that never get you bored. You're never like, well, it's only one a chapter. No, I, I bet she felt drab in a fucking sheet. Yes. Yes, most likely did. Goodbye. At the barn, Coco was jumping on and off the kitchen counter and looking out the window. Oh, I also realize, that, sorry, he's abused a cat dad because he just leaves his cat at the bar all day long. That's Isn't true. that, like, funny? Like, he just leaves him at the bar all day long sometimes. That is pretty funny. <laughs> like, not all the time, just sometimes. Like, an abuse a cat dad. It meant someone had left a delivery in the sea chest outside the kitchen door. Quilleran investigated and found two meat pies, an envelope, and a 1966 book he had lent Celia Robinson. The Birds Fall Down by Rebecca West. She would appreciate the spy story and perhaps the good writing. The note in the envelope read, Dear Chief, I, I catered a brunch in Black Creek today and made a couple of extra meat pies for you. Hope you like them. It's a new recipe. Thank you for letting me read the book. It was interesting. I never heard of her, but she's a very good writer. Sorry to be late with stuff you wanted. I've got a date with Lisa Compton tomorrow to find out about the Campbell case. The property you asked about isn't listed under Northern Land Improvement. They told me the county building. The owner is Margaret Ramsbottom. Agent 0013 and a half. Quilleran finished reading the note and made a dive for the Moose County Telephone Directory. He found only two Ramsbottom listings. One for Chester and Margaret. One for Craig and Kathy all at the same address in West Middle Hammock. Ramsbottom probably had everything in his wife's name. The news meant, however, that Quilleran had lost a bet with himself. It was not XYZ Enterprises who had purchased the Coggin property. It was really the Comish, who had taken advantage of an old woman and had lost no time after her death 
and leasing 12 acres to the county. The board of commissioners would have to approve the deal, but no doubt the barbecue king would arrange for them to vote right. Quilleran's first thought was to share the news with Rollo McBee, but when he phoned the farm on Baseline Road, there was only a non-committal message on the answering machine. He phoned, he phoned Boyd McBee and heard the same message. This is unusual for a Sunday afternoon. Quilleran grabbed his car keys and drove down to Baseline. Rollo's blue pickup was not in the barnyard, but another truck was there. Quilleran parked and walked around behind the house, where a young man was feeding the raggle-taggle dogs who had come to live there. Hi, Mr. Q, he said. Looking for Rollo? I'm Randy. I work for him. Where is he? There's no one at Boyd's house either. They all went to a funeral in Duluth. Their brother was in a bad accident. Two trucks and a tanker. They'll be back Wednesday, maybe. Anything I can do for sure. you? <laughs> not even sure, man. I'm not sure what's no, going on. No, I mean, are you sure three days? What the fuck happened? <laughs> Anything I can do for you? No thanks. I just wanted to chew the rag. Okay. That was what the farmers did at the coffee shops. I'll call later in the week. How are the poor mutts doing? What, Look no at it. Look at him. Larky is a pack of puppies. Quilleran returned to the barn and phoned his attorney's home. The Ram's Bottom connection was something. Bart should be told about, but his wife answered instead. Her husband had flown to Chicago that morning for conferences with the K Fund. To work off his frustration, he read to the cats. Coco selected the birds fall down. Quilleran thought, naturally. Wrigley's been sitting on it, keeping it warm while Celia had it. <laughs> End of chapter. Oh, my. Chapter 14. So Phoebe and her red-headed boyfriend and disreputable parrot were living in Indian Village. It remained to be seen how they would synchronize with that quiet and eminently respectable neighborhood. They were young people who worked late and went on enjoying life after hours with Jasper's racy squawks adding to the racket. Condo owners, on the other hand, tended to have established professional careers with somewhat regulated hours. After the 11 o'clock news, the entire village blacked out. The newcomers were living in the birches, Phoebe had said. That was the cluster of condos where the Rikers had a desirable end unit. Quilleran's native curiosity and newshound instincts were prompting him to start asking questions, perhaps too, the unsettling sensation on his upper lip spurred him to action. Hmm. Mm hmm. Dude, he just got a mustache boner. No one can fucking lie. For sure. Dude, don't lie. He just. Yeah. On Monday morning, he drove downtown and handed in his copy for the Tuesday Quill Pen. He was 24 hours ahead of deadline. Wait till I pick myself up off the floor, Junior said. What happened? I had a little extra time on my hands. Are you all set for the warm-up tonight? I spent the weekend in the bullpen, perfecting my delivery. I'm ready to pitch fast words, slow words, curved words. <laughs> How about spit words? They've been outlawed. Uh, that's such bad, 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 bad. Uh. Yeah, I got it. I know it's horrible. I'm, I don't. Mm, I get the weirdest jokes in this book, and not the obvious ones. And that's also I don't know it's a ship. Now he looked up Mildred Riker at the food desk and started with a cooking question. No. Did Iris Cobb's personal recipe for macaroni and cheese ever turn up in her papers? 
I'll never forget it. It had some secret ingredient. I know. You've mentioned it before, but and I haven't found it. Evidently, she prepared it so often, she didn't need to write it down. He started to leave her office and then said, By the way, Mildred, do you happen to know if the vacant unit in the Birches is still on the market? I know someone who might be interested. Apparently not, she said. Someone moved in a few days ago. I don't know who they are. Who else lives in the building? Susan Exbridge is in two, and Amanda Goodwinter in four. Susan is a wonderful neighbor, never gives parties, never plays loud music. You know how thin the walls are. Well, I don't fucking care. <laughs> On the way out of the building, he passed the publisher's office. Arch Riker called out, Looks as if we're home free. Only two days till the spell game and no calamities. It's oh not God. over till it's over, Quilla Ryan reminded him. The auditorium balcony could collapse. Wasn't it built by XYZ? Having acquired the information he needed, he headed for the central business district. Susan and Amanda, two fussier neighbors, could hardly be imagined for Phoebe and friends. He drove to Exbridge and Cobb Fine Antiques on Main Street. The former wife of Don Exbridge was one of the most striking women in town, having alimony payments that she spent almost entirely on clothing from down below, and her interest in the theater club had given her a dramatic flair. Darling, where have you been? She cried when she saw Quilleran. Working, he said morosely to arouse her sympathy. You poor dear. And what do you do? Look so easy and so much fun. Are you here to hunt for ideas or spend money? It all depends. Do you have any unusual items that are not too old and not too new? Are you interested in early scientific instruments? Mm, not really. Eh, you'll love the collection I bought from a little old billionaire in Dallas. She unlocked a curio cabinet filled with objects of wood and brass. Who's going to buy this stuff in pickaxe? He demanded. Me. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, I'd go broke if I depended on sheep ranchers and perch fishermen. I advertise in exclusive antique magazines and sell to serious collectors all over the country. <sighs> Always that bitch. What's that round thing? It looked like an attractive box. Not too scientific. About three inches in diameter, the wood lid was fancifully inlaid with brass. A very old Italian compass with an interesting provenance. Skeptically, he said. I suppose it came over on the Nina, the Pinto, or Santa Maria, or all three. Wrong century, darling. It's 1650, Circa. She removed the lid, revealing an ornamental dial under glass. Its boldest feature was an eight-pointed star. The dial quivered. Susan said, It's described as a pivoted 32-point compass card, painted by hand. The north point is indicated by a star, the east by a cross. How much? You couldn't afford it, darling. I'll take it, he said and handed over his credit card. Then, while the transaction was being processed, he remarked in an offhanded way, I hear you have a new neighbor. I hear the celebrated butterfly girl moved in next door. Susan stiffened with indignation. Is she the one who plays that god-awful music at three in the morning and has that screeching bird? I've complained to the manager three nights in a row. Last night, someone called the sheriff. <laughs> Goading her playfully, Quilleran said. But they're young, Susan. Her boyfriend works late. 
They have to have some fun. Why don't you act your ask your stingy ex husband to install soundproofing in the walls? Go home, darling, she scolded. Take your 17th century compass and go home. He left the shop with a feeling of triumph. He had ruffled the aplum of the unruffled Susan. And he had acquired a specimen of antiquity that would turn Arch Riker green with envy. From there, he visited Amanda's studio of interior design where Amanda herself sat scowling at the reception desk. Her usual bad temper was exacerbated by the long absence of her assistant. Feeling mischievous, he inquired if she had any paintings by the butterfly girl. You won't find any butterflies in this shop until they carry me out, she okay. fumed. I loathe the butterflies in any form, and that includes that Sloan girl's stuff. They sell well, and you could get a good markup, he and persisted. That's not the insane part about the argument. It's why are Who the you... fuck hates butterflies? Why are you like, no? Is your tomatoes get eaten? And now that she's a neighbor of yours at the Birches, what? Is that who's been disturbing the peace every night? I phoned the sheriff last night about the yelling and screamed it and the so-called music. I said, either you get over here in five minutes and muffle these ruffians or I load my shotgun. A deputy was there in less than five. That's why you keep getting reelected, Amanda. You know how to get results. You and Chester Ramsbottom. Uh -huh. That reptile. Don't mention us in the same breath. Is his wife a client of yours? I hear they bought the Trevlian house in the hummocks. Margaret? She's a nice woman. I don't know how she lives with that man. I guess that doesn't... Or I guess she doesn't. Much. He has all kinds of outside interests. I'll say one thing for him, though. Doing over the Trevlian house was a huge job, and I didn't have to wait for my money. Pause and take a break. There's a paw on the page, so drink up, babe. You know, it hurts me. It's starting to hurt me <laughs> real hard now. Every time I do it, it's starting to hurt me. After lunching at the Spoonery, a place specializing in soups, Quilleran wow. was driving home across the theater parking lot when he saw Celia Robinson getting into her car. He tooted the horn to alert her, and she hurried to meet him with her usual excess of smiles and happiness. I got your story, Chief. Are you going to fire me for taking so long? No, uh. but you'll be reassigned to New Zealand, he said sternly. So funny. This remark was greeted with gales of laughter. And everyone fucking died. But I did something naughty. I didn't tell Lisa I was taping it. I used Clayton's little recorder. Shimmy, 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 <laughs> shimmy. What the fuck? <laughs> I did something naughty. I don't know what playing this little reporter means. I don't know if I can... Um... Did you say reporter? Because I said recorder. I know. I said I don't want to know what Clayton's little recorder means. Well, it's ninety eight, so he probably just means a little. No, I mean it means is little recorder. There were ones <laughs> around this big, like there were in nineteen ninety eight. There were recorders, believe it or not, as <laughs> big and convenient. Believe it or not, as I don't my remember. dick. <laughs> Well, that's great. Convenient. Tiny dick recorder. Convenient. Convenient. Con Functional. Soon to be outdated. 
Can you oh! <laughs> Under the circumstances, that's not too naughty. <laughs> Would you like to bring it to the barn later on and oh. have something wicked in the way of refreshments? After more merry laughter, she declined, saying she was going to Mr. Odell's to work on a catering job. But I'll give you the tape. It's upstairs. Wait here. I can get it in a jiffy. She ran to the carriage house while Quilleran marveled at the energy and youthful exuberance. Close enough. At the energy and youthful exuberance she brought to her many activities. Returning, she said, I had to go to the Compton house to get the story. Lisa was afraid of being overheard at the office. So destroy it, chief, after you've listened to it. Is it okay if the cats hear it? I'm just so motherfucking quirky. You want to suck my cock? Uh, probably not. That's fine. Bye. I don't know. Was that real dialogue? I'm really not sure anymore. <laughs> Her laughter would still be heard as he drove away. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Fuck off. It's not that funny. It's not funny. Like yeah, it is because he has a bike. Sorry. I'm so sorry. It's very late. I didn't mean to be up. When Quilleran arrived at the barn, he was greeted by two highly excited cats. They ran up the ramp and back down again to be sure he was following. He followed them. It was the guest room on the second balcony that concerned them. They knew something was happening behind that door. Stand back and don't rush in, he warned. Let's not create any stress. Okay, one second. You know, I, I know I've been advocating against cat abuse, but, like, y y your cats told you about the danger. They're not going to run in. You yeah. just have to walk in fast and close the door, and they're gonna run out if there's, like, danger. So, like, I know he hates his cats and cat hates him. They just don't want to get robbed. I know, they're telling him because they don't want to get robbed, and they're like, well, he's the man, so he needs to deal with it. I know, I know, he's a man with a mustache. He needs to deal with it. But, I'm sorry, his cats hate him. That's just, I, I'm, I'm here for the cats, okay? I wish we could make size. Like, I don't want to have a death match. Like I said, the thing, uh, the joke I made earlier when the sun was still up. He opened the door and the cats rushed in. There were two butterflies flitting about the box and three more were waiting to metamorphose. They looked like the painted ladies in the guidebook. All right. Now they would require fresh flowers sprinkled with sugar water. He chased the Siamese out of the room closed the door carefully, and drove into town to buy carnations. See? It's cursed. <laughs> Only two? The young florist asked. Well, make it three. So much better. What color? The instruction manual had made no mention of the desired color. Make it white. He said, oh my God. "God, such class, such sophistication. I think such I, design. I, I, I am convinced this is a shit pose. White. I don't know. I'm convinced this is a shit pose. And if it is, it's fantastic. And if it's not, it's fantastic. And I fucking love it. I don't care. I'm too stupid and bored to get into the deepness of if this is comedy genius or not. <laughs> but I probably will because." I will probably find more of these books. Like, you know, it's lie. just so hard because <laughs> she's got really dead eyes, but like... <clears throat> like in a good way a, or a bad way? No, it's 50-50 it's mixed. It's oh. like, <laughs> yeah. either A, she's like, I fucking hate everything and read my cat books, you dumb fucks. <laughs> or she's <laughs> like, B, God, I wish I had Quill's dick. <laughs> both ways and that's 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 all I see so I don't know how to judge it because I see both 
and that scares me. Sorry, I don't mean to give you fucking flashbacks everywhere. Returning home, Quilleran again was abusive and locked the cats in the broom closet. While he mixed sugar and water, sprinkled it on the petals, opened the door of the butterfly box carefully, thrust the flowers in quickly, closed the box, set it on a fire, and stood back. The painted lady showed no interest at all. He went down the ramp, apologized to the Siamese for burning their tails, the ingenious of the incarceration, and applied himself to the answering machine. There were several messages, one of them from Don McBee, who said he was a disgusting fellow who he could no longer stand around, and that she would only want him to come by one more time to pick up his old belongings. Were you looking for Rollo? she asked, when Quilleran returned the call. We were in Duluth, just got back. Rollo's in the barnyard right now. I heard about the tragedy in your family. You have my deepest sympathy. It was really sad. He was doing so well, building a new house, kids ready for college. You can never tell, can you? Very true. Is there anything I can do for you? Well, it's about the spell game. One of the muckers has dropped out, and Colvert wants to know if he can substitute, seeing as how it's an emergency. Well, it might be an amusing twist to have a nine-year-old among all the adults, especially if he spells better than they do. Okay, bring him to the warm-up tonight. He's been studying his aunt's word list, Don said. Good. I think the fans will love the idea, and all the kids will be rooting for him. Thanks, Quill. Culver will be tickled pink, and Rollo will be so proud. Do you want him to foam when he's through with the chores? Let's wait till tomorrow, Don. It's nothing urgent. Pause and take a break. Are you going to change the, the pace, song, you so fucking fucker? Drink it Stop! 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 Don't kill yourself! The warm-up for the spell game was being held in the high school auditorium to acquaint participants with the stage. The procedure and the expected reaction was from 1,500 fans. The overflow would have bleacher seats in the gym watching the game on closed-circuit TV. The auditorium played up the school colors. Blue curtain, white walls, blue seats. The curtain was open when Quilleran arrived, and on the stage were two rows of folding chairs. The second row elevated on a low platform. That was considered the, ch the dugout, where the teams would wait for their turn at the plate. A table for the coach and the pitcher was down stage left, with the second one down stage right for the umpire and the timekeeper. In the center, a floor standing microphone was situated on a pentagonal mat like an oversized home plate. What made the scene spectacular was the stage full of hanging banners in the team colors, each with a team name. There were ten of them. Green for the money bags, pink for the pills, black for the diggers, as well as red, turquoise, orange, white, blue, yellow, and purple. I don't think a funeral in a small town would pick black. It wouldn't. Quilleran, who had a compulsion for counting everything and anything, observed an odd number of chairs, 31 instead of 30. One of the stage managers explained that Scott Gipple, who weighed 300 pounds, required two. Hixie had thought of everything. Backstage, a noisy horde of spellers was milling about in their baseball caps, which were also in the team color. The t-shirts being printed in Mooseville had not yet arrived, and Quilleran sensed the kind of snafu that plagued Hixie's beautifully organized projects. He volunteered to camp out on the printer's doorstep and even assist with the printing if necessary. As a contemporary measure, the spellers wore their team names on cards pinned to their shirts. 
assisting Hixie backstage were two efficient staffers from the something, Sarah Plensdorf, office manager, and Wilfred Sugbury, Riker's secretary. They guided spellers and officials to their assigned seats on stage. There's only one speller missing, Hixie said. Phoebe Sloan, her teammates called out. She's never very punctual, Beverly Forfar added. I saw her yesterday at the art center, Sarah shouted from the wings, and she was quite excited about coming tonight. Okay, we'll start without her, Hixie said. And you guys, Beverly and Thornton, we'll have to tell her what she missed. First of all, when the fans arrive on Wednesday night, the curtain will be closed, and the preliminary entertainment will take place in front of it. Spellers and officials will be off stage. Got that? At a given signal, you will jog on stage, single file like professional athletes. You've all seen the players make their entrance on television. As each one appears, there will be a burst of applause and cheers from the fans. Can we rehearse the entrance? Someone asked. We sure can. Everyone off stage exit in orderly fashion. Stay in line, then turn around and jog back on stage. Wilfred will start you off once every five seconds. Weatherby whispered to Quilleran, She's good, isn't she? She directs plays for the theater club, Quilleran said. And she not only knows what she wants, she has a way of inspiring cooperation. To himself, he said, I hope, I hope, I hope nothing goes wrong. Those taking directions for her were an attorney, the CEO of a large firm, an MD, and the superintendent of schools, as well as students, retirees, farmers, office workers, and one nine-year-old boy who would be ten wow. in July. That happened. I, I like, are they playing a birthday party or are we just talking about it? It's called a quirky age joke. Because oh, the kid right, will be like, right. I'm nine, and I'll be ten in July. Oh, okay. And so she's like, and there's managing that, and that, and then one little kid. Oh, he's so close yeah, to being Dude, 10. I got it. I just hate... Everything. It, it's not that I hate children. It's that I don't know <laughs> why everyone is like, I'll be that, and I'm like, cool. Everyone did it, and I'm like, why? I, I don't get it. That's why I just hate it, because it's, like, really cringy. That It's, like, the cringiest thing you could do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Here she comes! Someone yelled. Here's the late Phoebe Sloan. Better late than never. Sorry, I had to stop for gas. Phoebe apologized as Sarah pushed her toward the one vacant chair. Okay! Let's continue, said Hixie. The tenants have entered. They remain standing for the national anthem. At a signal from the coach, you sit. I want 30 backsiders to hit the chair seats simultaneously. Next, the coach calls a team to the plate. Three spellers jump to their feet and walk briskly to the mic. The pitcher throws out a word. The spellers go into a huddle and decide who will spell. The designated speller steps up to the mic and spells. The umpire rules thumbs up for a hit, thumbs down for a strikeout. Are we supposed to remember all this? Derek asked. Sarah has printouts. Ask for one as you leave. What does the timekeeper do? McWannell asked. After a word is pitched, the team has 60 seconds to respond. Or the timekeeper rings a bell. Mm. And the team is sent back to the dugout. Mm. What happens if a speller strikes out? Pender Wilmot asked. The team gets a second chance in the next inning. But after two strikeouts, the team is sent to the showers. They leave the stage. As the field narrows down to fewer teams, it gets more exciting. Now we'll run through a whole inning once. Every team gets a turn at the plate. Everyone was having a good time. 
Then Derek left, saying he had to go back to work. Phoebe slipped out soon afterward. No one else wanted to leave. They wanted to practice. Walking briskly to the plate, jogging on stage, hitting the chair seats simultaneously. They had to be chased out. Hixie said to Quilleran, It's great of you to ride herd on the t-shirts. The shop is called Tanks and Tees, right behind the shipwreck tavern. You might double check the names and numbers before you accept them, and be sure they have one XXXL for Scott Gipple. Don't worry, I proofread everything. Oh. oh my god. That is quite possibly the most... I don't even know. I don't even know. You just, books she gonna find, make me she pound finds, my mustache. She, she finds new ways to get me every time. I I'm like, that's wow, a good I right there. never expected a douche to say that before. <laughs> but he did. I proofread everything. Oh, God. No <laughs> shit. Like... I asked you to ah. search, I asked you to look for the size of a shirt. Did you have to say that? Couldn't you not just say, yeah, sure? No! I proofread everything, bitch. Oh my god, he's such a douchebag. I love God hey, Quiller no. ran. Uh. Then Thornton said to him, Why is Phoebe wearing long sleeves all of a sudden? She has pretty arms. Something's rotten in Denmark. Quilleran had asked himself the same question. She's not herself. What's going on? Thornton said, I've seen that boyfriend of hers, and he's not the type I'd want for my daughter. If I had one. How are the butterflies coming along? Just before I left, Quilleran said, Two of them hatched and were pumping up their wings, the way the manual said they would. Quilleran was somewhat exhilarated when he returned from the warm-up. He would have phoned Polly, but she was out of town, attending a Tri-County Library Conference in Lockmaster. He would have read aloud the Siamese, but he was in no mood for the Red Badge of Courage, which was Coco's choice. What he was in the mood for was a dish of ice cream with chocolate sauce and a few peanuts. After that, he was in the mood for playing Celia's tape. Lisa, tell me again, Celia, why you want to hear the story? Well, I have a nephew down below who wants to invest some money in Moose County, and the deal involves a county official, but he heard a rumor of a scandal connected with this man. He's very careful about things like that. He asked me to look into it, in strict confidence, of course. Is it Ramsbottom? That's the name. We don't like to talk about it, but... I know you're not a gossip. It's like this. He owns a bar and was once charged with watering the liquor, which could cost him his license. He claimed to know nothing about it and put the blame on his bartender. His name was Broderick Campbell. He was a very uptight young man. His father was a church deacon and his uncle was the pastor. He had a wife and three small children and was working two jobs to support them. We were all furious about Chep's accusation, but we were stunned when Broad confessed. Oh dear, I can imagine. He was sentenced to a jail term, but Ramsbottom used his influence to get the sentence commuted, provided Broad left the county. He and his family left in disgrace, went somewhere down below. His parents were absolutely destroyed. His mother had a stroke and died, and his father went into a black depression. His uncle, the pastor, was distraught, and things went from bad to worse. Broad's father was persuaded to go and live with the pastor's family. Then one day he disappeared. The police hunted for two days before they found him hanging in the attic of the parsonage. Oh, Lisa, what a horrible story. The pastor himself didn't live long after that. But why the bad feelings about Mr. Ramsbottom? 
Didn't he save Broderick from a jail term? Yes, but there's more to the story. One of the Campbell clan traveling down below found Broad in very successful circumstances. He was the owner of a large motel with swimming pool, restaurant, and everything. It was something he never could have afforded in a million years. Had Ramsbottom paid him to take the trip? Or the rap? If Broad was so honest, couldn't he have refused? He was trapped. Coming and going, trying to stand up against the powerful man would have been virtual suicide. Hello? Hello? What's, what goes on here? Why so gloomy? Celia, this is my husband, Lyle. Celia, Robinson is one of our most valued volunteers. Her nephew is contemplating a financial deal with Ramsbottom. Ha! Ah, tell him not to touch it with a ten-foot pole. That man's a crook. We all know he got a kickback from the new high school building. And the cost overturns would have bankrupted the county if the K-Fund hadn't stepped in. Well, I'm much obliged for the information, and I'll tell my nephew to steer clear. Click. Quilleran turned to Coco, who was sitting on the arm of the chair and listening. What do you think of that smelly mess? <laughs> Cat bleated in his new all-purpose monotone. Quilleran looked at his watch. It was late but not too late to call Celia and congratulate her on a job well done. He phoned the carriage house. When she answered with a flat hello, he asked, Are you boiling potatoes for salad or putting a batch of brownies in the oven? Oh, hello. She said without any of her usual merriment. This tape, he said, is one of the best things you've ever done. I'm destroying it, as you asked, but I predict this story will become another Moose County legend in 50 or 100 years. Glad you liked it, she replied without adding any chatty moment or comment of her own. He sensed a problem. This was not his secret agent, 0013 and a half. Was this why Coco had bleated his curious lament? Some news had deadened her spirit. Celia, are you feeling all right? He demanded with the severity of a senior officer. Yes, I'm all right. Is there something you want to tell me? He asked more gently. His neighborly concern touched a nerve, and she whimpered something indistinctly. I'll be right there, Celia. Pull yourself together. Taking a flashlight, he jogged a short distance through the woods. There was a predatory owl that lived among the dark branches, and Quilleran had taken care to wear his yellow baseball cap. On the way, he reviewed what he knew about her. A widow living with her grown son and his family on a farm in Illinois. She had moved to pickaxe to start a new life, doing volunteer service, cheering, and cheering the old and infirm, singing in the church choir, doing small catering jobs. Killeram himself had a vested interest in Celia's well-being. She not only supplied comfort food for his freezer and kabibbles for the Siamese, she handled errands and inquiries for the chief when he requested anonymity. She also laughed uproariously at his mildest quips. What had happened? Bad news from the doctor, death in the family. At the carriage house, he rang the doorbell and a buzzer released the lock. The stairs were narrow and steep. At the top of the flight stood a husky cat named Wrigley, who challenged him to show his credentials. How's the good boy? Quilleran asked. Wrigley recognized the voice and trotted ahead into the living room. Soberly and with downcast eyes, Celia murmured, Would you like a glass of something? Ordinarily, she would have made a joking comment about his yellow baseball cap. No, thanks. Let's just sit down and talk for a few minutes. Something is worrying you, Celia, and it will do you good to unburden yourself.
Obediently, she was used to taking orders from him. But in a hopeless tone of voice, she said, I had a phone call from my son in Illinois. His wife has left him, and he wants me to go back to the farm and keep house for him. Your grandson's stepmother, right? They didn't get along, right? She nodded. Clayton wanted to come and live with me, you know, but his dad put his foot down. My son is a very strict father. And how do you feel about leaving Pickaxe? I don't want to. I've been so happy here, but I also feel an obligation to my family. How old are you, Celia? I don't usually ask women their age, but this is important. Seventy? She said shyly. Then you've paid your dues. You've raised a family and worked on a farm for half a century. You're healthy. You have long years ahead of you. It's your turn to live your own life. But he's my only son, and he needs me. My oldest was killed in the service. Fate didn't send you to pickaxe to wait for your son's wife to leave him. Fate sent you here to do good things for a large number of people. Your son's wife may return. He may marry again. Meanwhile, he can hire a housekeeper. As for Clayton, he'll be going away to college soon. Your future is here. You've just started a business of your own. Something you've always wanted. Why does Mr. Odell think of this turn of events? I haven't told him, she said softly. I, ju I just found out tonight. How do you think he'll react? She shook her head and tears came to her lowered eyes. We were talking about getting married. Then for God's sake, Celia, live your own life. Your son's in his prime. Let him live his own life. Clayton is about to start his own life, and your life is yours to live. Quilloran stood up. Do you understand? Yes, chief, she said, smiling and weeping at the same time. End of chapter. Oh my god, he thinks he's just such hot fucking shit, and everyone loves him, he's got the best advice, no matter what age he is. Well, I'm sorry, folks, I try as best I can is to do things as live as possible inside these wonderful, wonderful journeyous reads, but I was unable to do so as I am, as you know, a drunken man who drinks these and forgets to do things. So what I meant to do in the middle of a one, two chapter break that I gave you today was to tell you that if you have somehow made it along this far and are actually interested in hearing our voices and having these fun times with us, reading these weird things, I'd like to tell you that, you know, we do occasionally upload other stories that we've created. One of them being a story from our own uh, paranormal comedy, mystery, drama, kind of whatever the hell you want to call it, story we call Finvale. And the first of the first video we ever uploaded on our channel is one of the stories from that, so hell, if you enjoy something, maybe go check it out. 